What's going on, y'all? What's happening? What's going on? It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Um, I wanted this to be a different type of live stream. <sighs> but I never know what I'm going to say before I say it, especially on a Wednesday night. On a Millionaire Morning Show, it's a little bit different because um, I get an opportunity to plan for the show a little bit differently. But for this one... Um, the way that I've structured it is I just genuinely want to get my thoughts off. And so I appreciate y'all. Thank you to everybody that's chilling um, in the chat. Thank y'all to everybody that's rocking with me. But let's just get right to it. You know, I prayed today. I prayed today. I prayed this morning. And I prayed before I jumped in the shower because I always jump in the shower before I throw my robe on or any of my night clothes on before I get in the bed. And so I pray. Uh, but before I pray, I always wash my hands and I brush my teeth and I make sure that I come before God clean. You know what I'm saying? Because I always want to come uh, with the greatest representation of myself in order to present myself worthy of even having this conversation. And when I talk to God, you know, I never ask God for anything. I never, ever ask God for anything. And the reason that I don't ask God is because I believe in the scriptures and I believe in the word. And I'm always seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I understand that everything else is going to be added unto me. Right. And so when I have these conversations, a lot of times I'm having them in truth. And I tell him to make sure that I'm unfiltered and to have his will be done in my life as I have these conversations, because I'm not here for the majority. I'm here for the minority. I'm here for those that, you know, want to separate themselves from the majority, because I know that most people is going to do what they want to do anyway. They already got a heart and heart. But sometimes you can get conflicted. And then sometimes you also ask God to take that that spirit of unrest away from you because you can't sleep at night. And in order for you to really be able to pour into somebody, you genuinely have to have a passion for it. You have to be emotional. Otherwise. It's just conversation. And I never wanted to just have a conversation online because I don't really care to be entertained. The only thing I care about is growth. And so sometimes that growth comes with having conversations with people that think completely differently from you. And so even though I know it's a lot of people that rock with me, I don't ever want to live in an echo chamber because growth don't come from being uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable forces you to do things that you never did before in order to get different results. Now, roll with me here because we're going to bring it all the way back around. And I think it's important for you to understand what we're saying right now, because and when I say we, I'm talking about me and my spirit, because often at times my flesh war against my spirit because I want to relax. And that's the affliction that you ask God to take away from you. Let me say it one more time. I want to relax everything in me. Everything in me is saying, Anton, divest yourself. You've done enough. You've poured into people. Uh, hopefully we make it into the kingdom of God with flying colors, not just getting in by the seat of our pants. And then when a God calls me, he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And you can have both. That's the misconception. You can have both. You can have both. Heaven on earth, peace, love, compassion, surround yourself with people. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to go through stuff, but you can have both. You can get into heaven and you can make the sacrifice on earth while living your best life. You absolutely can. But some of us, some of us are called to do something a little bit different in order to make sure that we really, really, Execute on the things that God tell us to execute on. And since I was born, before I touch, I touched a foot on this earth, I was told what I had to do. And part of living that life means that you're always going to be uneasy. Have that unrest within your spirit because I can't walk past the person on the street and see him suffering and then not have a level of compassion and then Something within me says I got to do something. I'm just one of those people. You ever seen any of those movies where it's people just walking past people every single day? 
and it's a person that's on the street and he's suffering and this and that. And the business part of me is saying that I can't do that because if I do that, then I'm going to prevent myself from getting to where I got to go and I got to be on time. But the humanity in me, my soul, my spirit, and that's the warring of the spirit because the warring of the spirit against the flesh is not always preventing you from doing something you're not supposed to do in temptation because you can't tempt me with something that I'm not interested in. The warring of the spirit is to do the thing that you know may be best for him, even though it may not be best for you. And so when we have these conversations, for example, I understand that I already have it. I have peace in my household and in my daughter and in my wife and in my mother. And my relationship with God is A1, is solid. But I know that the minute that I step out and I tell you the truth, that it's going to be some wrangling. But I was built for this and I was conditioned for it. But sometimes, sometimes you say, you know what, I just want to live my life off camera and I don't want to have these conversations. And so it's important for me to seek my peace. And you get that disillusion in your head and you think that you can actually live like everybody else, like. Like, you going to ever be regular. Let me tell you something right now. If you watching this right now, if you watching this right now, you not regular. You just like me. The only difference is that you haven't truly stepped into your calling. Some of you have multiple different callings on your life. And in order for you to really manifest that greatness, you're going to have to do what you want to do. Or I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. You're going to have to do what you're supposed to do. Because the true measure of a man is doing what he don't want to do when he don't want to do it. And so sometimes you got to make the sacrifice. Sometimes you got to do the best thing for everybody else and you got to put yourself last. Sometimes you know that in order for you to not let other people's feet hit the ground, you're going to have to do some things that's abnormal for you because you've never done it before. And so you step into the uncharted territory. Now, why is Anton talking like this and why is he saying all of this and what meaning does that have when it comes to relationships and doing the right thing in a 4B movement? Well, I'll tell you. Let me let me school you for a minute. All right. The relevance of what I just said to what we're going into tonight is based off of this and this only. Everything that you've done in your life, even though you have a calling on your life is leading you to this moment right here, right now, and that you have to be accountable and you're never, ever going to be happy. You're never going to have peace in your spirit. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care how successful you think you've become. I don't care how many chicks you bust down. I don't care how many men you sleep with. I don't care how many people tell you that you look cute because you got a beat face. I don't care how many people you think agree with you. You know within your spirit that you fucked up. You never made it right. You never made it right. You know you walking around with that spirit on you. You know you walking around ruining people's lives. You know you walking around not doing the right thing. You know you walking around and you left somebody behind that held you down in the beginning and you broke their heart. You wrong. You wrong. You wrong as two left shoes. And because you think that you can do what you want to do and it's a bunch of other people that agree with you, y'all all operating in deceit and you're going to bust hell wide open and that's the truth. You're going to bust hell wide open and that's the truth. You wrong. You wrong. You wrong. And you never going to have peace in your spirit. See, this is a very unpopular stream. Because it's easy for me to be able to put something up on a, on a screen and talk about something in particular. And then, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be a bunch of people that go rah, rah, or no, no, or yes, yes. It's a very unpopular stream. A very, very unpopular stream. But the fact of the matter is, sometimes we got to separate the real from the fake by having an unpopular stream and getting to the truth. And the truth is, you wrong. And it don't matter how much you think that you know, Anton is this, or you that, or he that, or whatever. At the end of the day, when you cut this live stream off, you wrong. We had a woman that was up on the panel on Monday night, this past Monday night, right? 
And 2K in playing, shout out to 2K, in playing, right? Because you know that 2K is going to be 2K and he going to tell jokes and he going to have a good time no matter what. 2K in playing told the truth. Now, sometimes because we laughing, we think it's just a joke. But in reality, it was the truth. And here was the truth. He was talking to a young lady that had put a mask on. And the way that we know that she had a mask on is two different ways, right? The first way that we know that she had a mask on is because when she jumped off the live stream and Quentin said, yo, Anton, she went live and she was mad at you in 2K, she looked like a completely different person. That's the first way we know she had a mask on, right? Because what she presented to us on the live stream was completely different than the person that was behind the mask. And I seen a woman online and she said, you know what? They neck is never going to match their face when they beat. And so whoever it is that you see that they are on a live stream is going to be completely different than the person that they are when they go to bed. The second mask on was a mask of fake confidence. And so you can tell a person got fake confidence because they start to lead with stuff that you're not even talking about. And so she was so bothered by the thing that 2K had for her. And even though 2K want to pretend like he an atheist, I know differently. I know differently. And those jokes that he said in the beginning, it, it wrestled with her soul. So much so to where she felt compelled to go live afterwards in order to defend herself and then throw weak jabs that had no relevance, not only to the conversation, but she probably should have did her research on who she was talking about before she talked. And I said to myself, Anton, let it go. You don't have to talk about it. Let them have it. But God said you got to use this as an example in order to illustrate a point. And the point is this. No matter what she do and no matter how much fake confidence that she has, it's all fake. It's all a projection. 100%. You know why? You know why it's a projection? 2K says something, and I thought that it was hilarious. 2K said, you see young M.A. walking in that background. <laughs> and I bust out laughing. And then when I went to her live last night after Quentin told me that she was over there yapping her mouth, I said, oh, ain't that crazy? Let me tell you how backwards that people are, right? You'll have a woman get with another woman, bump coochies, and the other woman is pretending to be a man. Think about that shit for a minute. That's the devil's work. That is the devil turning you over into a reprobate mind. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to give you a solution because I'm not going to let you hang. I'm not going to leave you hanging. The devil will tell you that you found true love in something that's not built for you, that you don't even have any capability, that you got to manufacture fake plastic toys in order to be able to truly get off because that's not even in your nature. It's not even in your nature. You can't be something that you ain't, but you pretending to be with something that's just like me. And so you got to get with something that's not even real to pretend like you with something that looked like a real man. Think about this shit for a minute. I heard her. I heard her. She said, yo, my kids. So you got children out of wedlock. That mean that you couldn't make it work. That mean that you stepped way outside of the bounds of what you were supposed to be doing. And now you're trying to remix it. And so what they do is they try to make it seem like everybody is against them when you made it about you because we were speaking in general. I don't care about you in particular. I don't even remember your name. 
But the fact of the matter is, a lot of people is walking out here with fake faces on, pretending like they actually doing it and being happy, when in reality, 2K called it for exactly what it was. You a sex worker. You shaking ass for cash. And yet you want me to believe that you walking around here with some fake confidence. That's Atlanta strip club behavior right there. It's just down there in Dallas. I was disappointed. I'm going to be honest with you. And the reason that I was disappointed ain't nothing that I had to do anything. I was disappointed in the fact that 2K and Quentin thought that she was worthy for me to issue a plane ticket. And then she said on her live that I was issuing her a plane ticket in order to come and suck, my, suck some dick. I get head every day. I turn down head. That's a fact. That's a fact, though. I get head every single day. So much so that I got to turn down head because I be wanting the box. What I want you for? I was so disappointed that they thought that I would issue a plane ticket. It's just entertainment for me. Very few people are able to get in my presence in real life. That's a fact, though. You can ask. You can look at the stats. You can look at the reports. You can look at the statistics. That's real life. I don't want you in order to get some box that everybody else has already hit. That's, that, that don't make you special. What the fuck is that? Listen, dime a dozen every single day. Walk outside, you'll see a thousand hers. A thousand hers. Because, see, it's not about what's on the outside. And that's the part that we really, really missing. It's not about what's on the outside. It's not about how much you can shake your ass. Every woman on the gram is busting it down for a real one. All of them shake ass. That don't make you special. It don't matter if you got a beat face or what type of wig you got on. We don't give a fuck about that. We talking about what's in here, the spirit, to the core, rotten to the core, so much so that you think that the person that you land next to is the person that you're supposed to be with. And now I got to come on here and be the bad guy when I was just thinking about it as entertainment and then I seen her go on her live, and then she was just talking shit. I said, okay, well, listen, I'm going to let it go. And then God said, no, nah, just use it as an example and illustrate the point so that the people understand exactly how they're supposed to be moving. And so now here we are. And we got women doing some of the most egregious dumb shit that I've ever seen in my entire life. I was reading today about some other stuff that was happening over in Los Angeles and Vegas. I also seen a video where I did and I reviewed it on the Millionaire Morning Show where a woman stabbed her boyfriend, her living boyfriend, living outside of their purpose, grabbed her kids, a nine-year-old and an eight-month-old, drove off in the car, jumped on the freeway, pushed the kids out on the freeway, the baby got ran over, the nine-year-old ran, wind up finding out that the nine-year-old's, her, her real father, because the other dude was a step crash dummy. The other dude that she stabbed up. Remember how I keep telling y'all to stop being step crash dummies? Y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to hear me. He has stepped in a row in order to take care of another man's kid. A live-in step crash dummy. Wind up getting knifed off. She jumped in the car with his kid and the other kid from another dude that was out of state. Jumped on the freeway. Pushed the kids out in the traffic. Put the eight-year-old in the nine-year-old's hand. Jumped on the freeway. Pushed them out in the traffic. The baby fell over. The cars ran over the baby. I'm not lying. If I'm lying, I'm flying. I actually did the whole story today. This is a real life thing. A real life thing. Car ran over the baby. The nine-year-old was able to get over to the side median. She jumped in the car. 
did 100 miles an hour and ran into a tree on purpose in order to kill herself. End of story. End of story. End of conversation. Wild shit. I was also looking at a video the day before that. Day before that. Daddy. He the father. He a lawyer. He's representing his son that's gotten a divorce. His son. This is in Vegas. The son got a divorce. The person he got a divorce from married the father's ex-partner in the law firm. So the father and his colleague used to work in the same law firm together. The ex-colleague is fucking on the son's wife. The son is fighting for custody with the wife and the ex-colleague is representing her. The father just said, fuck it, killed them both and then took himself out. Another tragedy. If you going to sit here and tell me that this shit is normal. Because overwhelmingly, the majority of the problems that happen in our society is tied to relationships. I tell you that you a fool and you lying. I'm going to tell you that you a fool and you lying because I don't believe that shit. I don't believe it at all. You can't convince me. Not even a little bit. You can't convince me. But yet I'm supposed to be sitting here quiet as a church mouse, not even having a conversation. I see women want to have this conversation about the 4B movement. It's blowing up online. I don't know how. It just started appearing in my algorithm. People start sending it to me in my email. 4B movement. Let me read it to you. I'm going to pull it up. I'm unprepared. 4B movement. This is the 4B movement. This is a feminist movement that supposedly started in South Korea. These are the rules of the 4B movement. Four rules. Number one, no sex with men. Number two, no child rearing with men. So you don't want to have sex with men, but yet you're going to have a child, just not with men. Okay. Number three, no dating men. Number four, no marriage with men. Sounds like a recipe for disaster. Let me say it again. These are the four no's. No sex with men, no child rearing with men, no dating men, and no marriage with men. This is the 4B movement. This is the feminist movement uh, in South Korea. And so it would seem, it would seem as though this is something that's a big deal. Like this is a huge movement that's happening all across South Korea and that other cultures are starting to embrace this. And so that's the narrative that's being said. Now, interestingly enough, I had been looking inside of my comments on some of the videos that I had been reviewing and I had been seeing a little bit of tinkle in here and a little bit of tinkle in there. And it was like, yo, you need to start and checking out the 4B movement. Women are saying, oh, you need to start and checking out the 4B movement. And then when I went on Hartley Initiated and I looked in the comments to see what the sentiment is, then they said, yeah, man, we need to check out the 4B movement. And I said, what the hell is the 4B movement? So I looked it up and it said, no men, no men, no men, no men. And so I got a little curious. And you know me, I can't just take what people say and what their word is. I can't just take what they say and what their word is. I got to go and research it for myself. So I go and researching and I'm looking at different videos and I'm trying to understand it. And what I found was that it is a small, minor, minimal movement in South Korea in which hardly no one, very rarely, you know how it is, Whoever got the biggest microphone or whoever say the most negative stuff usually gets the most visibility. And so that's what's happening. It's a small, small, small minority of female, we call them fem cells, but female incels that has gotten rejected and didn't get the results, didn't do what they were supposed to do in order to get married. And so what they did was they created this small little teeny tiny movement that everybody and every woman over in South Korea is against. As a matter of fact, South Korea is very much just like Chinese people. They just like every other culture, Arabic, Arabic people, all of that. Right. And that they absolutely positively. I just did a review video the other day. Believe that by the time you get 30, if you're not married, your chances of getting married is slim. 
slim to none, and I'm talking about the women. It's so much of a big deal that the women get married that they have the one of the biggest booming markets of matchmaking services. And those matchmaking services does not pair you with the Disney theory, right? The Disney theory is that all oh, this handsome prince that's rich, he's going to come and save you. No, it actually pairs you with somebody that you're more compatible with when it comes to where your socioeconomic status is, your mindset, your background, your parents, and all of that stuff. So the things that your parents did in order to put you in a position that you are today, good or bad, is going to factor into whether or not you qualify for this man, this man, and this man. And sometimes those men still don't pick you. And by the time you get 32, 33, 34, 35 years old, you're looked at as, as old goods. It doesn't even matter if you have a kid or not. If you have a kid, you absolutely is looked at as a leper. This is the cultural norms over in South Korea where they say it's the 4B movement, right? Now, when you take that into consideration and you realize that women are desperate, I mean feverishly desperate, did my own research, feverishly desperate in order to find a man that ultimately is going to marry them and then they're going to live happily ever after. Now you have this 4B movement proliferating because we got online segment and social media proliferating within the black community. And guess who the ones that's adopting it the most? Gotta be black women. I said, Jesus Christ. If we are not the most attracted to some of the most trash stuff that I've ever heard of in my life, God help me. I think we cursed. I think we cursed. Have to be. Have to be cursed. How is it that we can, we can find a small, minimal, minute movement in South fucking Korea? Not Japan. Not China. None of that. Not even in Seoul in South Korea. I'm talking about the outskirts of fucking South Korea. And somehow, some way, black women have tied themselves to this and said, we have to embrace it too. How is that possible? How is it that we can find the worst thing for us in the smallest corner in the, of the earth and say, ah, that's me. We're going to go ahead and embrace the 4B movement. What the fuck is wrong with you? Listen, men that don't even care for and dog out women would never want to live in a world without women. That's how backwards you are. You didn't learn from the first time that you adopted the feminist movement, the first wave, second wave, third wave. You didn't realize that it wasn't for you, but they used you in order to become a double minority or become a minority so that they can then level up and leverage the, the shit that they was already putting their men through in order for you to go through the same thing. And you fucking fucked up your family. And now you out here doing a scissor kick with another chick. You don't get it. You don't see it. You don't understand it. Are you that much of a fucking weirdo that you don't really get it? You find the smallest, dumbest stuff, and you say, that's me. We're going to go ahead and attack. Even men, think about this for a minute. Men that are some of the most abusive, stubborn, dumb, idiotic, don't even want to be in a world without women. Because it'll be miserable. Who want to be in a world without women? Even gay dudes be like, oh, gay dudes... Don't have gay best friends. Gay dudes have straight women as their best friends. They don't even want to be in a world without women because secretly they still, within their spirit, warm with themselves because they still want to fuck you. That's why his dick got hard when he was sitting around you. He keep playing in your hair. Next thing you know, you feel something sticking you in your back. That's because that's a real man. That nigga pretending. He got on the face. That ain't really him. He ain't really like that. He ain't that sassy. He just stupid. And he got a demonic spirit on his back and has been eating him alive. And somebody did something to that boy most, most of the time. Statistically speaking, sometimes, most of the time, somebody did something in him that then put that spirit on him when he was a child and he could never get it off his back. Because instead of us actually having a conversation on how it is that we can solve for what we supposed to be doing, what we did was we sent them to these dumbass therapists that's basically using a trauma in order to profit off of them in order to be able to substantiate their feelings instead of helping them to understand that you got to be uncomfortable in order to be really be able to get to the space that you're supposed to be in. I don't know anybody that's ever become successful unless they became uncomfortable first. Because you got to do something that you ain't never did before in order to get somewhere you ain't never been.
I don't know nobody that's ever been successful that did not, under no circumstance, do something that was uncomfortable or step outside of their comfort zone in order to be great. We don't believe in substantiating your, your dumbass ideas. That does, in order to be great, you can't just justify how somebody feels. We don't care. The world don't care how you feel. But this is why America is falling. This is why the culture is so trash. This is why we don't even have family no more. We don't eat together. We don't have a community neighborhood watch. We don't care about what nobody say. We say, mind your business. Who you talking to? There is no sense of community. I don't know you. So wait a minute. I'm supposed to just rock with you because you online and you got some black skin? You a demon. You a devil. I don't even like you. You don't even like men. Why would I align myself with you and say, oh, man, let's be for the black community? She don't even like men. I identify more with my gender than I do with my skin color. It's all different shades of us. It's a man and a woman at the end of the day. Oh, man, let's just all be for the black community. She don't even like you. She don't even know how to suck dick right. Because all she's been doing is eating coochie her whole life. She don't even like me. You got to pay for the pussy. Y'all out here spending money on these hoes in real time. And you think that they fight you? They don't even like you. They advocated updating family court laws in order to keep you under duress. But I'm supposed to align myself with the community? What community? The community? The community? What community? Everything that you do and every law that you create and everything you advocate against and everything you advocate for is to put me under duress. But I'm supposed to align myself with the community. Every, every chance you get, you steal my hubcaps. But I'm supposed to be advocating for reparations. Nigga, I'm advocating for you to stop breaking the law. And giving you niggas no money. Why would I do that? You can't even handle the little bit that you got. You have no education. You can't read past the third grade level. You hate each other. You rob each other based off of the fact that he wear red and he wear blue. And then this nigga over there, he want to put on some gold. And now all of a sudden, he a, a different lord. You niggas don't even like each other. Y'all can't even get along. You don't even like your own fucking brother. If you had the opportunity, you would fuck his girl. Now, we supposed to give you niggas some money? Don't you know that money absolutely, positively would ruin your life? Man, if we gave some of y'all niggas some money, you would crash out. You would crash out, bro. You can't handle no money. You keep wondering why you broke. It's because you can't handle it. And if we gave it to you, you'd be dead tomorrow. You'd be dead tomorrow. Nigga, you ginger. You ginger from casino. Y'all ever seen that? You should go and watch it. You ginger from casino. You know what, Ginger, you know what happened when Sam Rothstein finally gave her the money? She ran off and then she was dead a year later off a drug overdose because she got pimped out. You're going to get pimped out, bro. You're going to get pimped out. You a sucker. You ain't none of this. You, you, you don't know what it really... See, you thought that being a thug was going to make you a real nigga. I tell you that some of the biggest thugs that I've ever seen in my life is in the boardroom. You can't stand up to them. You ain't built like that. They're going to treat you just like Springer Bell. Off the wire. They laugh at you. Look, we think we so real. And the people that's really getting to it, <laughs> they laugh at you. They laughing at you. They going to treat you like Stringer Bell. You real to the niggas in the street? Yeah, you could do a live stream about Anton, but nigga, you still broke. You can't even pay off your mama's house. You can't even do nothing for your own parents, and yet you spending more time focusing on how you feel about me than fixing your own situation. Don't you know that you owe child support, my nigga? You ain't got time to be focusing on me. See, I got time. I got time. Yeah, I got all the time in the world. I don't have a bad time. I got multiple different places all over the city. Hideouts here. Cars there. I got cars parked everywhere. Ain't nowhere I can't go where I ain't automatically good. I got time. 
My mom living in a crib that she ain't never got to pay for in her life. Yeah. Everybody good over my, I got time. You don't have time. You sitting here being distracted with me, trying to war against me. I'm trying to give you the game on how you could be successful and you, you shooting your own self in the foot. I got time today. I got time today. We going to get to it. Oh, yeah, we going to get to it. I got time today. Boy, you ain't nothing but a stringer bell. They don't even respect you the way that you think that they respect you. You know, I see these dudes that supposedly thugs. Yo, I don't champion thug behavior. Let me tell you how messed up the black community is. I don't champion thug behavior. I advocate for the nerds. I advocate for more people to become nerds because that's the thing that's going to get you paid. That's the thing that's going to keep you saved. That's the thing that's going to keep you married. And that's the thing that your children should look up to. When we think about our children, we would prefer for our children to be nerds. We don't want our children to go through what we went through when we was trying to come up and trying to figure it out. So if I would want my child to be sheltered and raised in a better environment, how can I talk about another man and say, hey, you a cornball for being raised in a better environment or to move out the hood or to, or to not find yourself in a situation where you got AIDS or got step baby mamas or you went to prison? If I wouldn't want my own children to go through it, why would I look at another nigga and call him corny for not going through the thing and being a reflection of what I want my children to become? But you a real nigga though, right? This is how reprobate and backwards the black community is. You a real one. How many people online, because listen, in the same way that you see me on this live stream, you niggas is internet thugging too. Only difference is, is I advocate for being a nerd. I'm not an internet thug. I'm a real nerd in real life. Yep, sure am. Java, HTML, CSS, React Native, the whole nine yards. Android, Apple, all of that. Hybrid, whatever it is that you want to do from a coding perspective, we can get it done. We can create apps. We can do all of that, big dog. We can go through, we can UX it out. We can go on Figma. We can go on Adobe HD. Or, or XD, I'm sorry. We can go ahead, go ahead and pull out our editor and we can get to it. We can code the fuck out of this shit. JavaScript, whatever it is that you want to go into, we can absolutely get to it. Build our database, make sure that we launch that shit and get it popping, go and get that money. Oh, I'm a nerd nerd, absolutely. All I do is study. In my spare time, I'd rather read than go out and play, play ball with you, big dog. I ain't even going to lie. They got to force me at this point to go out there and fuck up my knees. Yeah, I read autobiographies. I study Warren Buffett. I study Buffettology. I'm trying to understand exactly how it is that he leveraged the ideas behind Ford's 1968 uh, earnings report and, and being able to pick a certain stock. Compound interest, Benjamin Graham, random walk down Wall Street. Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, all of that shit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I am reading it. I study everything and anybody. Dare to dream, all of that. I'm studying Gary Vee. I want to know what he know. I want to know what he know. I want to know how he did it. I want to know every single thing that I possibly can from everybody that's successful in order for me to really be able to leverage this information in order to be successful. Now, you from the hood, but you on, online talking shit, putting just as much time into your online persona as me. And then when I say, yeah, I'll pull up on you. I'll be your Huckleberry. You shut the fuck up. How you going to let a nerd say that he'll pull up on you, drop the Addy, and you ain't dropping the Addy if you that much of a thug? Just curious. How you going to talk about a nigga, but you online behind the screen talking about I'm tough? That's how backwards the community is. That's how backwards black people are. I don't want to hang out with you niggas. All y'all do is smoke weed all day. I don't want to hang out with y'all. I actually like women. I like being around them. I would prefer to surround myself with some beautiful women than to be hanging out with you niggas. I don't want to go to top, go top golf with you. I want to go to the studio and cook up with these ladies. But that's how backwards the community is. Everything is in reverse now. Every single thing is in reverse. Rather bang on a corner, on a block that your mother don't even own a house on, than to sit here and get some real money. Then talk about we need to build together. We don't even like each other. Why would I build with you when I don't even like you?
at least that white boy over there, he want to do business and he want to put some money in my pocket and I want to put some money in his pocket. At least that white girl over there, she trying to work because she may be a feminist, but she understand that working with me is actually in her best interest. And so she put her, her thoughts aside in order to go and get this money. At least that Asian over there, he want to count up. At least that Arab over there, he want to open up this store. And what you want to do? Listen to Kendrick Lamar and Drake go at it. And then even when we do get the information, we still don't know how to apply it. Even when we do get the information, we still don't know how to apply it. That's the missing link. Because some people are going to be what they want to be, and you can't change them. You're never going to change and force somebody to be something that they don't want to be. That's the key. The first key, before we, before we get to the solutions, and before we get to the thing that's applicable, the first key is that y'all got to be able to understand, listen, even in sales, the first rule of sales is people do things because they like you. Not necessarily because you got the best product. And that's why we got all of these identity politics and people choosing the thing that's not worse for, work for them because they're not looking at the thing that's best for them. They're looking at the thing that they like. So the, even the politicians understand that they don't have to offer you anything. The only thing they got to do is tell you what you want to hear because it's not about what's best for you. It's about what you actually identify as. You'll vote somebody in the office based off of identity politics. You'll get with a girl and call your girlfriend based off of the fact that she's visually up your alley at the time, but you won't roll with the woman that's going to be the best, best parent for, for your children. You know why? Because it's the same thing, sales, right? Why do you got applications? Why do you get online and go on Tinder and Bumble and all of these other fuckboy sites, right? I'm going to tell you why you go online and do it. Because you don't even understand that these algorithms and these applications themselves are not designed for you to even get married. They're not designed for you to be successful. But instead of us being thinkers and free thinkers, see, they hate me because I am a free thinker. I do my research. And if you understand exactly what these dating sites are like and these dating apps are for, you will get the fuck off of them. You know why? Because you, they lose money when you become successful at what you're looking to go on the app to do. Facebook is designed for you to continuously scroll. Instagram is designed for you to keep swiping up. They make money by keeping you engaged. It's the same thing with every single other thing in life. The dating apps lose money when you stop using it, so they have no incentive to actually pair you with somebody that's best for you. They're developing features to keep you hooked on the application, not to get you married. That's not the goal. Why would they want to lower engagement? That's not the point of why they went public with that particular application in the first place. Therapy is a fucking scam. Every single person that I know that's in therapy is perpetually and virtually in therapy for the rest of their fucking life. They never stop going to therapy. You know why? Because therapy is not designed to fix you. And the biggest scam that they'll tell you is that, oh my God, therapists are supposed to give you the tools to be able to break, break free of this, this thing that you got going on. Bullshit. It's designed for you to continue to talk to somebody to make you feel good. How the fuck the sick is going to pick their own doctor, their own medicine? How you going to go, how you going to diagnose yourself with the person that's supposed to fix you? If you don't even know how to fix your own fucking situation, how you going to pick somebody that make you feel good? Where they do that at? <laughs> how is the person that don't know how to get themselves out of the situation going to pick the person to get them out of the situation when they don't know the answer, Sway. But you pick them based off of the fact that you can identify with them, that they make you feel good, and you got all of this criteria, consciously and subconsciously, that's not best for you. And so 
the first thing that we got to do is we got to divest ourselves. We got to divest ourselves. We have to step away from the people that's not going in the direction that we're going in. It hurts. That is going to be the biggest obstacle. Block them. No longer give them access to you. Block them. No longer give them access to you. For the people in your life, I was in a coaching session today, and I was talking to one of the brightest young men that I had came across in a long time. He just needed guidance. And when we started deep diving and we started digging into his life, I found out that the reason that he did some of the things that was self-inflicting and the wounds that he had, and him being on the phone with me, and him giving me that call or the Zoom call that we was on, actually helped me to realize that, listen, he want to do something different. That's why he on the phone with me right now. But he got these vices all around him. And so the hour or the hour and a half that we have a conversation is not going to be enough when he got people beating on his door every single day, influencing him subconsciously and, un and consciously, influencing him and, and priding him and pushing him and, and, and having peer pressure on him to do the things. If you around smoke all day long, at the very least, you're going to get secondhand contact. And then when you go and get a job and they piss test you, they're going to say, you can't get this job. Sorry. And so it's not that he wanted to do the thing that he was doing. It was the fact that he was influenced and he thought it was cool subconsciously because of the people that he surrounded himself by. And so when you're ready to break out from it, the first thing that you got to do is no longer surround yourself with the people that's keeping you in it. You don't even realize you're in the hood until you're out the hood. When we was in the hood, we thought that the hood was just cool. We thought we was doing okay. Hey, man, I got an 86 Buick Regal and I got these rims and I'm riding. Got that 350 under the hood, Flowmasters. We good. We got sounds in the back. Oh, man, these hood hoes love us. We don't even realize that there's something else out there. And you don't know that you're in the hood until you're no longer in the hood. You don't even realize how bad you got it until you, uh, you step outside of your comfort zone. When your comfort zone is really the thing that's killing you, but stepping outside of your comfort zone just take a little bit more effort. It's doing the things you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. That's the measure of a man. And so the minute that you step outside of that comfort zone, then you realize, damn, this shit is fucked up. I remember one time I actually went back to the house that I was raised in. I went back to the house that I was raised in, and I didn't even realize how small that house was. And I'm like, man, we all was raised in that crib? And it put things in perspective. Because the minute that you get used to being great, you start expecting greatness. And so the minute that you start surrounding yourself with people that have your best interests at heart, at first it's going to feel weird to you and you're going to reject it. And you're going to want to go back to that thing that made you comfortable. But if you stay there long enough, it's going to become your norm. So much so, you'll start to divest yourself against the thing that's not good for you. And you think that these people are so cool. You think that they're going to be there for you all, your whole life. They're not even really your friends unless they actually want to push you outside of the thing that they used to seeing you doing. But you so busy people pleasing. So busy trying to stay in the hood. So busy trying to keep it real. You're going to be keeping it real broke. You're going to be keeping it real single. And you're going to be by yourself. And you'll never find happiness. And doing the same thing over and over again. And expecting different results. So once you divest yourself from it, then you got a choice to make. Because I talk to people all the time and they take the talking points and they take the things and the advice that I give them and they don't really know how to apply it. It's not applicable. And so now they're creating chaos and disruption in their house because we missed a step. I'll admit, I'm going to bring myself to the front of the congregation. I give you the information. I give you the advice. But the application is what we've been missing. You can sit there and give everybody all kind of instructions on how it is that they're supposed to do what they want to do. I'll give you an example. Even if you go and you become a doctor, right? You can't just look at it on book knowledge. You can't just go to the classroom. You actually have to shadow. And you have to do a residency. You have to study 
under other people to see how they apply it, how they're able to do what they do, what they do under duress, how they move. If you follow an electrician, if you go over there with a plumber, it's going to say, hey, do A, B, C, and D. But it's a completely different conversation when you see him doing it because he's going to see it. He's going to be like, oh, man, you know, that one got to go on a slope and then we got to put some, some lube around this and you got to make sure that it's tight and you don't want to do this. You got to go get that elbow. The application is different when you're actually seeing it, which is one of the reasons why I've always lived my life o online and as an open book, because anybody can say, hey, vet for the woman. Make sure she got two parents, no single children, whatever, so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. But you don't see how to deal with her a certain type of way. You don't know how to find a woman that's equally yoked. You don't know how to be a friend. You don't know how to be able to vet through. I don't have to ask a woman what's her body count. I know if she for the fucking streets. We have the conversations online and we say, well, you know, women with high body counts and, you know, body count matters. But we're not really having a conversation about how you go through and determine whether or not she's a hoe or a housewife, not necessarily having to ask the question, but being able to have a conversation and letting her tell on herself. She going to tell you. It's certain clues that you're going to see when you're walking in the room and dealing with women. Absolutely 100%. Absolutely 100%. And so it's the application that we miss in. When we tell women, hey, you got to be in your femininity, you got to be peace. What the fuck does that look like? What does that look like? What does it mean to live in your femininity and be his peace? What does that mean? Does that mean be a punching bag? Absolutely not. Does that mean come in and rub his feet every day? He going to get used to that. He going to, that ain't nothing. That ain't shit. Don't bother him. Keep his balls drained and keep him a sandwich. Y'all going to be broke up in a year. Y'all going to be broke up in a year. I'm telling you, you're going to be broke up in a year. And if it was so easy, then how come ain't nobody been able to do it? The application part, and I'm going to just tell you, this is the first step in being successful. When you find somebody that you actually believe that is suited to be around you, the application part is similar and it's the same way that we do from a business perspective. The number one thing you got to be is you got to be open. You got to be open. You got to have ears. Even the greatest of kings was not the greatest of kings because they were just so rigid. The greatest of kings understood where to put people at in order to be successful. And he understood that it wasn't that he was the smartest. It was that he was the most open to hearing what everybody else had to say so that he can make an informed decision. The greatest CEOs is not the smartest people in the room. They're not the greatest engineers. They're not the greatest salespeople. they none of that. Their talent is in observing and hearing and understanding that there's other people that have talent in the room that may be smarter in their respective fields, and it's your job to observe and then make an informed decision that's going to be best for the group. It's to be like water. It's to be open. It's to hear. It's to put people in a position of power. It's to find out what makes them great and give it to them. It's sometimes being uh, a disciplinarian because you're doing it out of love. Sometimes people need to be pushed, but if you don't understand them, even the word itself says, and everything you get, get understanding. If you don't understand them, if you're not observing them, if you're not paying attention to them, you can't just come into a relationship, think that you're just going to go to work, come home, get some pussy, and that's going to be the end of the conversation. You're going to be broke up in two years. Two years, max. And sometimes y'all still together, but y'all already broke up because you mentally checked out, they mentally checked out, and y'all just like ships in the night. And that's why I say that it's a difference between being successfully married and just being married. Because the time that y'all have, that could be like a prison sentence. Or, or it could be a badge. It can be achievement. Time works both ways. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. Some people doing their time and they can't wait for it to be over. That's called a prison sentence. That's similar to you going to prison. You just doing time every single day. You with each other 
because you've been with each other. That's just what you're used to. And sometimes you get so used to it, you then get institutionalized. And some people are in their relationships institutionalized. And so being married for a long time by itself on the surface is not just the way in which you substantiate whether or not somebody is built to give you advice. And then other people, they do it as an achievement. That's the good side of it. That means that they continue to grow. They continue to grow. They continue to blossom. They continue to evolve. They continue to become greater. Right? They're growing together, interconnected. I'm pulling you, you pulling me, and we making sure that as we grow together, neither one of us is going to the left or to the right too much because if you go too much to the right, then you're going to grow out of pocket. You're going to grow crooked. It's a yin and a yang. And in order for you to be that, you're going to have to do the same thing that you would have to be in order to be a CEO of a company. You're going to have to be rigid sometimes. And you're going to have to have compassion sometimes. And you're going to have to be able to listen sometimes. And then you're going to have to talk sometimes. It's being fluid. The application of it is being a great leader. Leadership qualities extend to every area of your life. And that's why when we do coaching calls, we don't do coaching calls just in money or just in business. Because who you are across the board, even from a character perspective, is going to feed in how successful you are in corporate America. The same method that it takes to be great in corporate is the same method it takes in order to be great in your relationship. And you know what's so interesting about that is I see people put more time, more effort into being great into their corporate mindset and all of that type of stuff, and they can't bring none of it home. They cut it off when they leave the job, and when they get home, they become a completely different person. They cold switch. But the person at your job is who you really are. And we think that the cold switch is who we really are. Because you got to try to be ghetto. Because you spend a majority of your time in corporate. That's who you really are. You not the person that you are at home. That's not the real you. The real you is the person that turned it on when you got to work because that's the part where you thrive. That's the thing that you're doing. That's why you're so, so much more submissive to your boss not because they signed in your paycheck, but because you understand that they gave you a vision, leadership. Women want to be led. That's why they're so loyal to their fucking bosses. Listen, it's secretaries that go to the different jobs, depending, it's executive secretaries that go to the different jobs, depending on where it is that that guy go. That guy can switch a whole nother company and he'll say, you know what? I'm going to take my wife. With, I'm sorry, not my wife. I'm going to take my executive secretary. The executive secretary know your husband more than his wife because who you are at work is who you really are. You're missing it. The executive secretary knows your husband better than you do. That's his real wife. <laughs> who you are in the spaces that you spend a majority of your time is who you really are. And then that's who you're doing your time with. This is who you're spending your time with, and that's who you're doing your time with. Because you can't wait to get back to work. You can't wait to get back to work. Think about it. At what point in the day do you put on the mask? You're not putting it on for work. You're putting it on for when you get home. Mmm. Mmm. Come on, man. Let's talk about it. So when you're talking about application, ask yourself, why are you so much more successful at work than you are at home? And if you put the same amount of energy or even a fraction of it into what you got going on at home, how much more fruitful would it be? You at work, killing it, raises, promotions, loved, adored, and then you, you hate it in your own household. Why? Why? Come on, man. Listen, y'all tune into this shit every single Wednesday. 
Every Wednesday you come up here, I don't have no clue what I'm going to talk about. We start to mine this stuff out. We start to get into the thick of things. Come on. Think about this for a minute. Let's put it together. We free thinkers over here. Why are you so much more successful at work than you are when you get home? And don't say it's because they don't appreciate you. Because a leader is leader anywhere they go. I'm great everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I'm great. It's a fact, though. Why are you not, or why are you, you minimally great at home, but you awesome at work? Everybody love you. You a whole other person at work. So much so, you don't even want to take your chick to the, to the Christmas party. Because then they gonna, she going to see who you really are. She don't know you. She don't know you. Because who you are at work is the real you. And you cut that off when you get home. Let me, is the link in the chat? Because this is going, you know what? I can go for a whole nother hour. Is the link in the chat? I want to make sure that the link is in the chat. All right, the link is pinned to the top of the chat. Let me read some of these super chats for my dog, Freezy. I'm sure my dog, Freezy, is going to come through. Charles Freeman says, always enjoying rocking out with the content. Anton, stay up. Much love, man. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate you, Charles. Handsome Man says, keep planting them seeds and watching them bear fruit. All work works. Shout out to Handsome Man. I appreciate you, big dog. Um, Delta Fox says, Anton, with the Versace robe tonight, I ended up getting... Uh, people love good quality hoodie for $80. The one you have is no longer made and out of stock everywhere. Shout out to people love good hoodie. Let me get my hat. I don't even get nothing from this. I just wear my hat religiously because I love the people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, time's up says, you fam familiar with Gaylord, Michigan? I am familiar with it. Your car is in the building. Shout out to my dog, your car. All glory goes to Yah. We are just servants. Humility before honor. Proverbs 18 and 12. Hashtag chasers. If y'all not a part of the bag chasers, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat, man. Kung Fu Hustle says they left the natural use of woman of the woman Romans uh, 1 and 27. Shout out to Kung Fu Hustler. My dog. Shout out to my dog. I want more people to hear this message. God bless you, Anton. Shout out to my... Hey, how come they only show my messages when they think that they're abrasive, but they're not showing the game? I had to cut myself off because I could have went for a whole nother hour. James Sharp says the 4B movement is nothing but a reintroduction of feminism for Gen Z. Feminism was losing traction, so they found a way to reignite it in the West. And they don't even rock with it over there in South Korea. You know what I'm saying? Matt Newland says... Go in, bro. Shout out to Matt. I appreciate you. My dog, DJ Kane in the building says, good evening, AD. Do you think normal dating and genuine love matchmaking will become normal again? Today, it seems like if you didn't meet your mate during grade school, then it's about money. Thanks. Nope. I don't think it's going to become normal. I don't. I don't think it's going to become normal at all. But we can expound after I get my dog up here, though. Hold on. Let me get my dog. Give me a second. After I get my dog up here, we can expound. Freezy, what up, though, big dog? Hey, Dizzle, what's going on with you, bro? Chilling, man. I love that jacket, bro. I need one of them. Man, my wife got me this jacket, man. That jacket is dope, man. You got you a good one then, bro. I ain't even like the jacket. You like it? <laughs> I love it, bro. It's sweet. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. That's sweet, bro. Um, and and Freezy said, I'm wearing it just because my wife got it for me. <laughs> she, hey, she, you know, she, I got to. You know how I go, man. You got to wear it. <laughs> hey, AD, they say, they say, what's the secret to a happy life, man? What's you know the what secret saying? to a happy life? Yeah, well, you know, my opinion is first, first and foremost, you got to, you got to worship the, the most high God. You got to. And that's why I implement that in my um on my live streams a lot. Yeah, it's done become uncool, and, and that's why that's another reason why I fuck with you at time because you don't hide it. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? It's done become uncool to uh really even associate associate yourself uh and talk about the spirit of God. I think that that's the most important thing 
Um, as as a matter of fact, in my life, I know it's the most important thing because that was the catalyst that changed my life. Yeah. And then second, dog, you got to stand for something. Yeah. You I got to as a man. Right. And then I know this is an unpopular opinion, but the reason I'm the reason why a lot of a lot of people well most of our community is breaking down. Dog, I'm tired of these weak ass dudes, dog. These dudes that they don't stand for shit. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like they are like dudes is conforming to things that I would never have imagined when I was younger, dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it ain't even no more OGs. Oh, like even even the dudes that was like even the dudes that was in the street back then at least had some type of principle. Like these, like these, these guys is different, dog. And then third, you got to be, you got to stop being afraid of these hoes. Mm. Like you know, it, you know, it's like you got to, you got to stop being afraid of what. And and when I say hoes, I say that on purpose. And I tell, I tell my people that no cap crew know that I say that on purpose because. If the shoe fit, wear it. Yeah. Right? If the shoe fit, wear it. You know, and I'm not talking about, you know, women. I'm talking about hoes, dog. These <laughs> niggas is afraid of hoes. You know what I'm saying? These dudes is afraid to stand up in the room and and and, and actually uh actually stand and actually acknowledge what they stand for, say what they want. Say what they tired of for the fear of upsetting these uh, upsetting them, and I see I'm I'm starting to see it more and more and more, dog. Yeah. The content is changing. YouTube is changing. It is. it is. It absolutely. Like is. How, how different is it from when you when you first got in? Like like just the the rhetoric uh, from men. How different is it? Is it changing too? Like you know what I think that um. I'm trying to reprogram my algorithm to where, look, bro, I seen, I seen a bunch of dudes. I see, I see panels sometimes and it'd be a bunch of guys on them. Right. And mm -hmm. on those panels, they argue with each other about <laughs> how weak each other is. They argue with each other about how weak each other is. And they all false flagging and, and, and they present themselves to be stronger than they really are, in my opinion. I, I just think that I think that it's a bunch of weak guys. <sighs> you know That's what's bad. so funny? Like, I see guys that won't even stand up for what they really believe in because they're afraid of what the other guys that's on the panel was going to say about them. <laughs> Seriously, that shit is so weird. I was looking at somebody. Um, I was observing somebody um, the other day. And I'm not going to say their name or whatever. And they let them bully him into having a difference of perspective because they didn't like what he said. And I was like, really? You that weak? But, you know, it is what it is, bro. It yeah, is because what it they, is. you know, they're conscientious of who watching. You know, you know what else I see, weird. though, Crazy? What's that? I'll one? see guys complain about me, but I drop the link every single day on one of my channels for somebody to come up and say whatever it is that they want to say, and they never do. Know why, Aunt John? Never do. Because when it's time to stand on it, they ain't really standing on nothing. They never That's do. why. They never do. I drop the link to almost, almost every single weekday. I drop the link, and I never see these dudes come up. Ever. Ever. I'm trying to figure out what they scared of. They scared of their motherfucking self. They scared. They scared of. They scared of not impressing who they want to impress. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm gonna tell you something. This some real shit. Men that still stuck in their vortex of trying to impress people all yeah. the time. Yeah. Like, 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 dog, dog. I don't been dirty. I I don't I I don't got dirty most of my life than trying to impress people. I dog. I I don't even know what that looked like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro. 
these guys, you know, I, I am very leery of guys that always trying to impress somebody because even if they imp- try to impress Freezy, you know what I'm saying? If I know it's fake, they're going to wait for somebody more important than Freezy to impress and then they're going to shit on me. It ain't no loyalty in that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I knew it was real with my wife when I was able to, when I, when I, when I woke up to her and I seen her at her worst, that's when I started loving her the most. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I woke, when I woke up to my wife and and she, she looked like all hell broke loose. Mm -hmm. That when I was like, damn, I love you. I really love you now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it's real. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And, and see, and, and that's how we need to start congregating with one another. That's how we need to start communicating. It's all, all this and everybody trying to impress, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you the truth. I even got more respect for the dudes that's 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 uh, that's causing havoc in these YouTube streets, but still being they self. At least you being yourself. At least you standing on something. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it, bro. Shit. Let me, let me see what some of these people is talking about. Let me see. Chris. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? You all right? Can you hear me? I can hear you. How you doing? Sorry about from yesterday. I couldn't get the mic working. You so said what happened? Yesterday, uh, you, I tried to call you yesterday, but uh, uh, I couldn't get the mic working. Yeah, that's cool. What's the word? No problem. Okay. Uh, well, I wanted to talk to you with regard to the topic today. And uh, I feel that uh, I'm, I'm actually I'm a lot older than you, and I'm saying that when I was growing up, we didn't have these problems. How how old is a lot older? Than, you a lot older than me? Oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm 60 years old. Okay, you said when you was growing up, where you from? Uh, I was from Detroit. Uh, I grew up in Detroit, over there by Hubble, uh, over there by uh, Whitney and uh, Long. Yeah, I think the city was a lot different than when you when you came. Way, oh yeah, way 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 different. And um, what I'm what I wanted to say was is that I think I think a lot of it is because of the music and the the images that we see about black women and black men. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't. I don't disagree with that. I think that that plays. I don't think that that's the. I don't think that that's the entirety of it. I think that that plays a role. I think that plays a huge role. Well, I think I think that plays a bigger role because as I grew up, the music was all about women, family, especially with the OJs, and and you and you and you, it was always about the message in the music. It was all about black love. Mm-hmm. And my mom and dad had this tremendous black love for each other at that time. And you saw it in other blocks and other families. It wasn't until, um, I would say, the late 70s that things started to change. Mm. Especially when you had um, the, uh, the the gangs and the, the Young Boys Incorporated. And, and yeah, YBI. YBI. And that really changed the whole neighborhood because people started to not talk to each other, mm. not to communicate with each other. And people started to become more isolated and started reflecting with regards to material things. And as, as, as we became more materialistic, uh, I would say our value changed. Especially my value change, my family value change, even my sister's value change. Do you think your personal value changed? Oh yeah, certainly did. Because as I started to uh, listen to more, especially when it comes to rap, when rap came on the scene, I really got into that scene of rap music with regards to the, the Dookie change, and and then I started seeing my whole boy who was in the dope. Who's in the dope game? They had the Dookie chain and the Adidas uniform and all the other type of stuff. And then I started slowly drifting away from family, women, and I got more into um, selfish thing. Instead of community thing, I got more into selfish thing. Think about me. And it became all about me, 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 me. 
and uh, when my uh, my homeboy tried to to recruit me to be in the and then to the uh, YBI, the Young Boys Incorporated at that time, and I tried it out and it got a lot of trouble. Oh, you got and, a lot. You got a lot of trouble with YBI. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to jail. I went to youth home. All that stuff. Mm. And so, Man, crazy, bro. Yeah, and like I say, I became more materialistic, and women became less and less and less, and women became more bitches than hoes. Mm. Uh, and I never had that understanding about women growing up, but. As the culture started to change in the city, women became less and less in the more about sex and the, the images. That's crazy, bro. And I think that my, uh, as we, and especially as music, especially rap music, as rap music started to go more and more towards uh, denigrating women, calling women bitches and hoes, bitches and hoes, this and that and all this. I think women just said, you know, uh, I'm not a bitch, and I'm not a hoe. And, mm. and and I believe that uh, uh, our culture contributed to the separation of men and women, black men and women. And also, I work in, uh, uh, I have a company in uh, in uh, Ann Arbor right now, uh, which I work on uh, with the University of Michigan. So I see a lot of uh, black students and different students of different culture. And what I don't see is black men and women together. You see Asian women and Asian men together all the time. You see all the culture, white men and white women all the time on campus. What you don't see is black men and black women are uh, holding hands or, or, you know, uh, some type of uh, uh, relationship that you that they show on campus. So, um, but what you do see more and more of is black women and white men. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I appreciate it, OG. Thank you, big dog. All right. Thanks. All right. What you think about that, Freezy? You, you, you muted, Freezy. I think you muted. Oh, snap. Okay, my bad. Yeah. I think he's right. I think that it's a big change, and especially from when he was younger. And, uh, you know, well, black women say they're the most race lawyer, but I don't know, man. When I leave my house, I'm seeing a lot of more black women with white dudes or other races. I'm seeing that, like, more and more heavier, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah, you know they. You know, I, I mean, maybe it's just maybe it's just uh, my anecdotal experience, but I do see a shift. And uh, when he was talking, I was like, "Damn, the black church done failed us, man!" Because we've been going to church for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we've been going to church for a long time, but it's just like you know, I don't know. Anton, I was like, "What was what was the what was the purpose?" You know for us going to church all them years and this shit is getting worse. What's the problem? You know? I don't really know what that is. I don't know what the solution for that is. I need to deep dive into that. I haven't really thought about it at length. I mean, I mean, listen, I seen a girl on, uh, I seen a girl on Instagram that said, uh, she was like white, uh, a white small hat uh, race or whatever. She was saying that she believes that black women are happier with white guys. Now, now, why she felt like she had the jurisdiction to say that, I don't know. But uh, I would be interested to, to talk to a woman that has experienced white men and see what their perspective is. <laughs> she said, I, that, I, I, would, I would be interested in hearing seeing it. I, I don't think I've ever really had that conversation at length with you know several women from that perspective. So I'm not. I I'm think a, that'd be a excellent judgment. conversation. Yeah, I'm a reserve judgment for right now. Maybe I'll put it out. <laughs> Instagram on my story and say, hey, if you want these type of chicks, come out at me. But <laughs> I, let me see what these other per people are. Uh, before I, I'm gonna come to you in a minute, Glow. Uh, let me see who this person is. Charles. Yo. What's going on? 
Uh, none chilling, chilling. I just, uh, I'm a fan. Uh, you and Tan. Freezy, what's up, Freezy? Salute. What's up, man? Yeah, I'm a fan. Um, you're inspiring. I think the insight is needed, especially um, being a young man and, you know, seeing how everything is going in the world. Mm -hmm. I think people like you guys are, are needed. Uh, you, it's, it's definitely something special what you guys are doing. So I just, that's just want to give you all your flowers. That's all. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Yeah, show love. That's it. Thanks, Charles. I appreciate you, big dog. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, Charles. That's it, Charles. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I mean, you know, I just, I'm, I just respect what y'all do. You know, I mean, I don't really got too much opinion on the topics, but you know, I always like to give credit where credit is due. So. How, old, how old are you, Charles? I'm um, 21. 21, huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good, man. Yeah, that's what you doing? Cool. You in college or something? Or what you doing? Nah, I'm working. I'm thinking about going you back working? to school, though. Yeah. Thinking about going back to school. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, you working, man. You, at least you're doing something, you know, legit and, and productive. You got, you still got a, a lot of life ahead of you, bro. Hmm. Yeah, I wish, man. I wish when I was 21 years old, I wish I would have called in the Anton show. <laughs> Shit. I wish I would knew. What? Man, let me tell you something. If I called in the Anton show when I was 21, man, I couldn't be stopped right now. I, man, I'll be up there. I'll be having lunch with Bill Gates right now. Yeah, if I knew, if I if I had, if I knew the stuff that I know now, man, that shit would be crazy. <laughs> For real. That would be crazy, bro. That would be insane. I appreciate you, Charles. Yes, sir. Appreciate you guys. Glow, I'm going to come to you in one second, big dog. Uh, let me see about Goldie. Goldie? Goldie. Goldie. Goldie, you got to turn your YouTube off, baby. Goldie. Jesus Christ. Listen, when y'all call yeah, in, y'all gotta be ready. Oh, that's a man. I thought that was a girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? This dude listening to the team. Right. Okay. Yo, what's up, bro? He talking to the TV, man. You got to turn your TV off and turn up your device, bro. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Okay. What's going on, man? Oh, yeah, man. No, I'm just calling in, man. I'm, I'm a big fan of the show, man. And, you know, oh, so wait, 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 wait. Why you name? Why you name Goldie? Oh, uh, that's the name of Street Gaming, man. That's 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 the name I've been having since I was young, man. Oh, you know, I'm 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 corporate now, so I ain't in the streets no more. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 a you know what I'm saying? I'm a corporate cat now. So, but that's just you know all my you know you know what I'm you know saying? I'm a nickname on my on my on my social media and stuff. I got you, big dog. So what's the word, man? Say, man. So <laughs> here's something that. I want to touch on as as far as like with the men and the women thing, you know, because it's like, so I'm from Dallas, born and raised, been down here all my life, you know, even with, you know, so like I go visit, you know, go travel, you know, Cali, Florida, and, you know what I'm saying, uh, Louisiana, you know what I'm saying, it, it were around, I noticed it's the same thing as far as how the women they want this this high value man thing or whatever like that but they're not able to give what they want you know what i'm saying it's like they're not giving the image of something that they're trying to attract and it's how, like how old are you goldie? how old are you goldie i'm 36. are you uh you married yeah how long have you been married big dog uh, going on eight years. That's dope. You got any kids? Yeah, yeah, I got two. Uh, I actually got one that's graduating this year, going, uh, you know what I'm saying, college, you know, so she'll be heading off going to U of H. Wait, wait, Goldie, you're only 36. Yeah. 
Well, I got her mama pregnant when I was a senior in high school, she, and she she was born May tenth, two thousand six. I was the like you know, like the day she was born. I was taking my exams, to graduate. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, you was uh, yeah, you was silver then, wasn't it? With silver, you golden nine. That's crazy, bro. That is a, how old is your youngest? My youngest, thirteen. You plan on having any more? Nah, nah, I'm done with that. Nah. Bam. Well, congratulations, I mean, I, bro, on, on raising your kids and and them going to college yeah. and everything. Like, man, that's that's dope, bro. That's right. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. You know, even, even with that, you know, what I'm saying, because you know, like. My father wasn't a big part of my life, you know what I'm saying? So, like, once my mother divorced him, you know, it pretty much, that nigga divorced me. So, that's, you know, then, you know, of course, he was a drug addict and th things of that nature and stuff like that. So, I, I took it upon myself, you know what I'm saying? Because I know how I feel not to have a father. And so, that's one thing I wanted my kids to be able to say, like, man, my daddy was around. Yeah. Regardless if I'm with, you know, the moms or whatever like that. Man, my daddy was in my life, and he was in and, you know what I'm saying, was always in. I ain't no in and out cat, you know what I'm saying? So I made sure because I know how I feel not to have no father around, you know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's you know, so I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to do what I'm supposed to do, you know. Hey, that's dope, man. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Shout out to you, man, and, and congratulations on raising <laughs> uh, the way that you're raising him, man. That's awesome. You know, one thing I notice about when I hear stories like that, when guys say they didn't have a father, it ain't no in between. It's going to have an extreme effect on you, either on a, in a positive way or a negative way. That's true. Every time, dog. Every time, like, like oh, if yeah. you don't have, if your father wasn't in your life, either you just going to, like, hate, you know, the life that he, uh, that 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 he didn't that he did not give for you that he did not prepare for you enough you're gonna hate it so much well you're not gonna want to duplicate that for your kids or you're gonna let it affect you in a negative way and you're just gonna be so resentful you know you're just gonna crash out i every time i hear a story like that it always be two extremes or either the positive or the negative i don't know why it'd be like that hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's, and, and, and then like that's the other thing, you know what I'm saying? Like with me, with me having my dad around, once I had kids, I was like, okay. And you know, what I'm saying my daughters, they be like, oh man, like you doing too much. You know, I mean, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm over this. I say, but you know, when you're a daddy and you never had one, you kind of do go to the extreme of being a dad because you never had that. So you want to make sure you do it. And sometimes I go above and beyond, you know, and sometimes. Mm -hmm. I might, you know, be a little bit more overprotective or I might trip on certain things, but that's just the daddy. I mean, you know, when you don't really have that to look at, you know, you might got other men around you growing up and stuff like that. But when you don't have it for yourself and all you got is a, you know, saying a mom and a granny, I mean, they good women and whatever like that, but they can't teach you how to be a man. They can just teach you how to be a productive citizen. So for me to try to give my daughters the idea of picture of a man, that's, you know, that's you know, that's what I'm supposed to do. You yeah. know, I feel like a lot of people don't get that, that concept with the, you know, even if you're not with the, you know what I'm saying, the mom, I mean, you still supposed to be there, you know what I'm saying, for your children, especially with, you know what I'm saying, with young men, because they growing up, they crashing out. Everybody listening to rap music, don't know that shit. That's what's putting everybody in the grave and locked up. You know, you know they what, let that influence them so much. What, what you're saying is true. And that's why I don't give these deadbeats no excuse when they say, well, I ain't have no father. No, bro. I mean, what you need to raise your, raise your kids is 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 a lot of a lot of love and dedication. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's like you you ain't sitting up here saying, well, I ain't have no father. And that's why I don't know what to do. No, man. You you know, you ain't just cleaning the house. You pressure washing that bitch. You know what I'm saying? You doing all kind of stuff that you ain't even got to do. Yeah, you going to go <laughs> right, beyond. Right. You, you, you understand? I said because you don't want to make no mistakes. And see, that's what it really takes. That's why I don't take excuses from a lot of these, you know, men or women. Yeah. You know, your background, your past. You ain't had no parents. You ain't had this. You wasn't born. You wasn't raised like you wasn't fortunate like that. That's no excuse, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like nah, real nah, love. Nah, that's real. Stay, stay in the gap. 
Nah, I mean, I mean, and, and that's really that's like like the oldest. I took her mom to court years ago. You know what I'm saying to get custody, and then once it turned out it was gonna work in my favor, then she wanted to try to settle out of court. No, like we finna run this shit on up. I gave you a chance to <laughs> out of court the first few days. Did you no, get it? Ran that shit on up. Did you get it? Yeah, child? I mean, oh no, like I ain't even want to do that, man. And and I could have, mm-hmm. but. It just, to me, that just, I just threw it like, man, I don't need your money. I'm the one that's doing good. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, and so, I want child support. And, and, yeah, I mean, you know, because it's like, I could have got the child support, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, man, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a man at the end of the day. Man. I mean, so either I'm going to be able to take care of myself and my kid or I'm not. You know what I'm saying? So, the child support, that's cool, but well, I didn't really It's not about the child support it. that you need it. It's, a, it's the principle. Well, true, true, true. Yeah. I mean, because when I think back now, I probably should have, but at this moment, I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I mean, sh- I mean, it's like, I mean, I've mean, i I've done good so far. I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, feel yeah, I should have, you know, I, sh- I probably should have, but I was like, man, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but yeah, man, I, I mean, it's, it's and, and that's the one thing I try to stay on my daughters about, you know, Cause I see this this new generation doing all this, you know, all this crazy wild stuff, and it's like, you know, is she going off? Is she going off to college? Is she going off to college? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's going to to University of Houston. Uh, she was going to go to Oregon because she got a full ride, a thirty grand scholarship, full ride scholarship to Oregon State. Mm-hmm. But you know, her, her thing was. Well, you know, I don't want to get stuck out there. Da, da, da. I say, man, look, live your life. I say, but just know, I can't make them fly you back when there's a snowstorm. Your ass just stuck. So, so she gave up there, a scholarship. She gave up a scholarship to go to Houston. Well, yeah, but she wanted to do it because 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 University of Houston have a, uh, a a sports medicine program where they work with the the Houston Texans. And so that's the reason why she picked them over there. So she gave up a scholarship to go and pay for education to go to university to go to Houston. Right. Yeah. Hmm. It was a full ride too. It was a full ride. It was a full ride. Ooh. Freezing. It, was a, it was a full ride. Hell, freezing! Oh my god, that shit oh. hurt me. That shit hurt me just then. This, is this is the offer right. still on the table? I believe so. Yeah, I mean they still send us stuff, but and and that was the thing that it did hurt me. But at the end of the day, I looked at, I told, I say, I don't want you to make no decisions off anybody else. Make your own decision. So no. that way, if oh, something no. doesn't, oh no. I make the decisions. Well, I'm I'm, I'm putting it like this. At the rate we're going with everything, I made a decision like, look, you're going to go to school. Now, what school you want to go to, depending on what program you're going in, Mm -mm. that's more up to her. Because, and the reason I I look at it like this, so that way there won't be no resentment on me. That way, if you don't end up making it. I don't care about no resentment on me. I am not here to make you feel good. I am here to make the decision that's in your best interest. You'll get over True. that. You gonna get over that. <laughs> I am. I am. I do not care True. about your resentment. I am not your friend right now. I'm your father. That's that daddy's little that's girl true. syndrome, man. You don't want. You don't want to see that sad face. Uh, you know. I don't care, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, man. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I mean, and so I think it's still on the table because you know. I mean, like we was talking about the other day, and she was like, "Well, you know, I don't make the decision." I say, "Well, I say, but don't rule that out." I say, "School not even over yet." I say, "So don't rule it out." So now nah, it's still on the table. She hasn't declined it, nothing like that. That's well, just Houston, where yeah. she wants yeah, to go. Houston is ten thousand a semester. Uh, I think Houston more like yeah, Houston between like twelve, thirteen a semester. Why is she yeah. going into sports medicine? Uh, cause that's what she did in high school. Uh, cause like she did the co-ed, I mean, not co-ed, but like, but the dual credit. So basically her past two or three years, she did half college classes and half high school. And then, so 
uh, tell her, tell in the program. Go, tell her to go in a STEM. Uh, tell her to go in a STEM. Yeah, she had looked at some of that as well. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, so she checked that out as well, though. Yeah. Tell her to go in Cause she, STEM. So, cause, so, like in high school, yeah, STEM, go yeah. STEM I mean, because, like, in high school, she, she, so she pretty much did where, uh, you know, like, uh, like for the games, like the football and basketball, you know, when they get hurt, she, she's wrapping them up and you know, all that kind of stuff like that, standing up for the game and stuff like that. Listen, man, tell her to go into STEM, tell her to go to Oregon State. And to a STEM program in Oregon State, tell her to go to STEM program in Oregon State, bro. And she get a call. Okay. Trust me. Really? Trust me. If it's a, if it's a full ride and she can go for free, Tell her to go to a STEM program in Oregon State. Thank me later. Okay, okay. I I, I, I sure so appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Don't let her do that. Don't let her go to I'm I hate to say it. Don't let her go to Houston, dog. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah. I mean, cause she cause she was really sold on TSU. It's like at first it was TSU, TSU. And I'm like, don't go there just because I went there. Like, go there because that's really what you want to go. You know, she was stuck on there for the longest. Now, you know, she finally got off of that. I was like, I'm so happy. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I've seen b better programs, you know, at, like, maybe PV. I know Oregon was real good. She even got something from, uh, I think it was Kansas State or something like that. Tell you know, they sent her something. Full ride uh, is. But Oregon know where the full ride is and go into a to, listen, science – Technology, all of that, bro. Mathematics, engineering, all of that stuff. That is the stuff that is going to make money, bro. Yeah, yeah, nah. I mean, so, so she, 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 she's into some of that. So yeah, I've, I've been talking back and forth to her. You know what I'm saying? So I've, I've been really, you know, been talking to her. Then you know, then you know, then then they like my T Jones. She's been talking to her as well. So, you know, so everything been, you know, like coinciding with everything. If, so, if she know. go to Houston, if she go to Houston, you was going to get her a car? No, nah, I mean, she got my car already, but I wasn't going to let her, I, I, I wasn't going to let her take it though, her first year. Hell no. Oh, okay. Bro. No. Nah. Tell her what she's, tell her what she's going to do. You're going to have to guide her. It's not about what she oh. wants, it's about what's best for her. Oh, yeah, no, nah, yeah. I mean, because she was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take the car. now." I said, no, nah, you ain't taking no car. I mean, first year, you ain't supposed to run, run oh, crazy. I'm talking about what college she go to and what program she go in. All right, bro, I, I, let me let me keep it moving. I got to get these other people up here. Yeah, yeah, she's going to be happy when you okay. come to graduation right. at Oregon State. Yeah. All right, I got <laughs> All right. Okay. All, All right, right. y'all. <sighs> let me get go, uh, Glow up here. What's up, Glow? We got. We got to yeah, make. It, glow. Got, man, what's up? We got to make it quick, big dog. I got what's you. The word? What's the word? I, I I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm just coming up here. This 4B movement is is fucking crazy. Excuse my language. Um, I've been talking about this stuff for a long time, and like you know, what I'm seeing is is that black women are attributing themselves to like the worst movements for them. Um, I think that when you consider the environment that we're in, when people tell us not to, you know, when people are trying to convince us to stay here and date and you literally have uh, women aligning themselves, when you have our own women, you know, American women in general, but like when we, when we specifically talk about black, excuse me, when we specifically talk about black women and they tell us to stay here and date, it's just like, you know, it's a disingenuous argument. You know, Here, but I, here's, I the, here's the other side of it, though. Here's the other side of it. You only need one, bro. That's it. Like a lot of times, we we have this conversation about the dating pool. I only need one. I don't need a whole lot of them. I only need one. I'm good. I just need to find my. Find I get that. And I'm straight. I don't give a fuck about the rest of them. Let all the rest <clears> of them <throat> where they want to be. And I and I and I have the same mindset. I have the same mindset. I just really it's just very disappointing when you have the blacky blacks and stuff like that talking about talking about you need to stay here and do this and that and these women the our women keep on aligning themselves with movements that aren't beneficial to my the woman. overall community. They're not my you, woman. Yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> I, I I feel you. I'm just I'm just getting tired of hearing the message. You you see what I'm saying? Like I'm here I'm tired of hearing 
black women sitting up here, not even just black women. Let me let me just take them out the equation. My uh, women, American women that just, rock with me, bro. We got it. We can't we can't keep containing ourselves based on anything, race, all of that, attitude, neighborhood, city, nothing, bro. You roll with who roll with you. I agree. I agree. I agree. Um. Yeah, man. I just want to say, hey, shout out to my boy John Anthony out there. I just uh, put him on to you. You know what I'm saying? He gonna he gonna tap shout in with you, him. see what's up. I took. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, shout, shout out, out to you, bro. boy. Um, you know, uh, I I want to keep on. I want to tell everybody out there, please keep on pushing to be the best part of yourself, and you are better than certain people. Like, stop. You know, stop trying to pigeonhole yeah. yourself to the common man because you weren't. The common man or common woman is not seeking out this type of information and you need to place yourself above others because you are. And if you don't recognize that, then you're going to be right in the pits where you need to be. Shout out to you, Glow. I appreciate you, big dog. Yeah, Glow. All right, man. All right, for you. <laughs> All right. Let me get one more person up here and we're going to see what's happening. Uh, Jonathan, what's the word? Hi, how's it going, man? I'm from the UK, man, so keep driving, man, bro. You said what now? I can't hardly just, hear you, big dog. Oh, hi. hi. Uh, my name is oh, I can hear you now. Uh, I, I, just come, you now. I just come to call you in regards to... Sorry, I'm from the UK, by the way. Shout out to the UK. To I appreciate you, bro. I just came to call you in regards to how did you, when you were 21 years old, show your business plan to your parents? You said well, how old was who? No, I'm saying when you was 21 years of age... How did you show your business plan to your parents? Because right now, I'm, I'm working constantly in my business. And like, it's just my parents are like, they want me to go to do a master's degree in which that I want to do it. But at the same time, I don't see any job prospects. I don't see any job prospects within the master's degree. So what's the, what's the curriculum that you in? What are you studying? So sport and exercise science. So that's uh, in the UK. Are they paying the for it? Exercise. Are they paying? Yeah, for yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So starting. Okay, go get, go like, get that master's okay. degree, bro. But but at the same time, if I did, if I do the master's degree, I'll be I'll be studying at a step six level. But then when I go to the NHS, which is pretty much the the medical services of the USA or whatever it's called, right? But in the UK, if I was doing a master's degree, and then go step a level down to the NHS I'll do step five so there's there's just no point doing a master's I may as well just go from straight from undergrad and go straight to the NHS and work my way up because when I work my way up I've calculated this within like 12 years I could be earning like 100k a year but and 12 years you time. Earning 100k a year yeah yeah because if you if you work your way up the stage is within the NHS because there's band there's band five band six band seven band eight band eight and upwards you start to earn 80k Plus a year. That's like after twelve years. That's a years. long time. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. So that's what I was thinking. Uh, what's the What's the business plan? What are you trying to do with your business? So I'm trying to do uh, deal sourcing. So deal sourcing is basically you you have uh, invest investors come to you, they look for property, and then you just go on that. So, behalf okay, but here's the thing: how come you business. How come you can't do both? Because I'm 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 play I'm playing uh, professional football as well. Okay, I got you. So professional that's football over there is soccer, right? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's why I'm that's why I'm trying to manage my time. So I'm just trying to figure out whether I should juggle three things or juggle two because I try. To I think you should, three honestly. Um, I think you should get the if the appearance is paying for it. I would get the master's degree. The business ain't going nowhere. You can yeah, always. That's what my parents told me. You can always start a business. I think that the business ain't going nowhere, bro. That's a no-brainer. But, but, but at the same time, though, at the same time, though, uh, I've started to run things like no numbers in regards to like cost of living and stuff, and uh, the way things are going right now in the UK, uh, it's not worth waiting around for that hundred k, even if it's drastic increase. Why do you have to go in that to particular start. curriculum now? Why can't you go into something that's gonna make you more money? Because I, I'm I'm deep into it now. I'm about to graduate, so I have to switch up my my strategy. I, honestly, I just think you should do both. You reckon? I know you playing football um, or soccer. For those of you that that's not familiar, but I think you should do both. 
because right. you always want to have something to be able to fall back on. The, the degree is not just for you to go into that particular field, which it should be, but also on top of that, I think that you should be able to do both and you should have multiple streams of income. Right. You should well, be building thinking, your business uh, and going into sorry. You should be building your business and going into whatever it is field that you're trying to get into. Okay. I mean, how long is it gonna take take you to get your master's degree? Just just one year, man. Because in the UK, uh, master's degree <laughs> is just one year. Go get that master's degree, bro. There you go. <laughs> if it's only gonna take one year, go get the master's degree, bro. <laughs> right. Ain't nothing gonna well, be different. Uh, 2025 and 2024, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, so what what did you do when you was 21 years old? Because obviously, oh, I, I was in the right path. I was working. I was working at 21. You was working at 21. Mm -hmm. Right, because I was thinking I was... Uh, in the summer break, what I'm, what, what I'm going to do is just put like a figure, like a figure amount of money that I'm going to earn. Any any amount of money that I put on the paper, I'm gonna have to earn it regardless before my. Before well, my I was working, but but I should have. I think I should have went to school. Um, if I would have went to school earlier, I mean, I don't know. You know, it's a butterfly effect. Who knows what would have happened? But hypothetically speaking, I wish I would have went to school earlier. Um, I made a lot of money, but it was all for nothing because I wound up going broke anyway at 26. So once the recession, and, and, and once, and the recession was that? once the recession hit in two thousand eight, I had one broke anyway. So okay, and well, I had to start. I had much. to start all the way over and go back to school anyway. So you know, thank you very much for your time. I just came to call you in regards to just how you show your business plan to your parents and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I think value into me, so. I think you should do both. And um, you just got to learn how to manage your time effectively. It's only going to take you a year to get your ma get your master's, especially if they're paying for it. It's only going to take you a year. Um, okay. And then play about a year from there, big dog. Uh, sorry to sound sound really or really anything, but I didn't mean to cut you off. I just noticed that time is short on your end, so I just tried to get my stuff out there as effective as I can. So. Let me tell you something, bro. We all human. We cool, man. I consider you cool. You family, bro. We all We all friends, bro. Ain't you ain't no offense, ain't none of that, man. We just friends, man. We just kicking it, All right. bro. All right, Jay. Thank you very much. Uh, you added value into me, and even Freezy as well. You added value into me in regards to not just only finances, but relationships as well. So just thank you overall. Keep doing your thing, man, please, because it just puts me on the right track. Thank you very much. I appreciate Shout it. Shout out to you, big dog. See you later, man. All right, bro. Hey, make sure y'all go and subscribe to my dog Freezy's channel, No Captivity with Freezy. Uh, one of the best live streamers, in my opinion, one of the best live streamers on YouTube in general, bro. So, AD, I did a stream yesterday. Mm -hmm. Dog. <laughs> I felt it, dog. This shit was finna take off. That shit did was you? To... I'm about to go and rewatch it. No, you can't. Why That's what I'm trying to tell you. Because YouTube, the YouTube hit me with a copyright because I played a video. I played a video from WB. Mm. I thought I thought I filtered it enough, but man, they ended up blocking it in every like globally yeah. and shit, man. Yeah, they uh, do that stuff sometimes. Uh, man, I was gonna take off, man. I was feeling it too. It was a good live stream. Dog. Yeah. yeah, they will do that sometimes. So. But man, I, hey, listen, listen, yeah, yeah, y'all do what my dog Anton said, man. Yeah, listen, come on over to the No Cap Crew, and um, we be hanging out, man. You know, and you know, me and Anton, we're we're affiliated, we brothers, man. Matter of fact, Anton brought me into, he brought me into his fold. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, I it, listen, listen, and shout out to, shout out to all the uh the bag chasers too, man. Your car, well, hold on, your car Chris, show before, you, before you leave, let me get one more person up here. Let me. I just saying. Okay, about okay. Shout out to your car too. He showed out yesterday. Uh, Key. How y'all doing? What's up, big dog? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good. What's happening? Man, yeah. taking it easy, just trying to get some good game on. Just things to really level myself up on. Um, I just turned twenty four. Okay. I think you said your birthday. I want to tell you happy birthday, by the way. I think your birthday just passed. No, my birthday, my birthday is the, the birthday is the thirteenth. But happy birthday, bro! 
Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I'm going where, you, where you from? Where you from? Detroit. Well, I'm from Romney. I, I, yeah, it's I Metro. I, it's the Metro. I don't, I, I don't be trying to claim the Detroit just because of the fact of like you got some people that like just ride on that. Like, you know, I mean, but we, we, get we get it. We get it. We get it. You, you, twenty minutes out. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm trying to go. I, I had called up here. I'm in. Like, I was in the bag chasers at a point in time. I had lost my membership just because I couldn't pay for it. I'll be honest. Um, but I did. I had called up here and asked you about some of the stocks on the uh, on the stock live, and that same live I asked you about going into tech and cybersecurity and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I decided on my end. I feel like it would be better for me personally to go into software development. Let um, me ask you a question: Are you working? Yeah, I'm working right now. Where you work? I'm a. You don't have to name the company. I'm a, what are you doing? I'm a CN. I'm a caregiver slash CNA. Okay. Um. So, uh, and you I, going to I school? Like, you gonna go to school? Oh yeah, I'm going to. I'm currently in the program right now through a place called Empower, and then add on top once I get done with that program, that's just gonna help me get some of the fundamentals. And the plan that I'm hoping for is to be able to gain a job from them because that's what they basically offered Mm -hmm. to be able to get in that field, to go ahead and start getting the experience in that field, hopefully by the end of this program, and then turn around and go to school right after that. I want you to to get a a book. Um, It's called Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Get that book, bro. You order it on Amazon. It's an awesome book. Read that and then tell me what you think, okay? 12 Rules for Life. Okay. And then also get David Goggins' You Can't Hurt Me. Read the David Goggins book first. David Goggins' You Can't Hurt Me. And then read Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. You Can't Hurt Me, sir? Yep. Okay. By David, um, and then Jordan Peterson, Twelve Rules for Life. So, main questions that I came up here to ask, um, mainly, do you feel like it's a good? I'm gonna explain myself. I feel like me personally, I got a certain type of work ethic that, to me personally, I like to create things. I like to kind of make my own version of stuff and rely on that stuff to be able to keep driving me to be able to make money slash just the what do you like stuff. what do you mean when you like to make stuff what do you like to make everything i kind of just go out uh, just making my own stuff like i'm i'm a, i call myself a chef i'm not legally a oh, chef so you talk about food wise food wise no I'm, I'm talking about in general life like you know how certain people just kind of go in and make their own route of being able to do things a certain type of way. That's kind of how I am. I, mm. Even like at the job that I work now, it's certain people that work a certain type of way, and it's, it's me. I, I kind of do it in my own fashion. To no, survive. you might want to might want to do it the way that they told you to do it, though, bro. I mean, I, I'm create, doing create, it the way being creative, do it. your own time, but and then make sure you, that know, you keep your job, though. <laughs> To, to me, like, all right, what I mean by that is, like, I do it in the sense of if I was to ever be watched in the sense of, you know, somebody just wanted to watch the normal work day and how I work, they could be able to really analyze that I do my work plus some. Now, some people at my you. job, they don't. They just, I got you. They, they, do, they do the minimum, and then once they do the minimum, that's it. So no, wait a minute, wait a minute. From a creative perspective, maybe you shouldn't go into software engineering. Why you said that? You can get that as a background. I think that you should probably go into to UX, UX UI. Hmm. You know what UX UI is? Yeah, user, user interface, user experience. Yeah, look into that. Um, you, you think that's still something that's um, going to be positive? 20 years down the line with AI coming in and everything. Yep. 
because I feel like software engineering, you still going to need people that's going to be able to develop the code, no matter what. Listen, um, UX, UI, go into it. I, that's what I do for a living. Okay. Okay. All right. Has it? You can get. You can still get a background. You can still get your background in software engineering, but you can you can master and and, and leverage your expertise when it comes to UX UI. Okay. So can I shoot you a shoot you a like? Yeah, shoot me an email, bro. On, you got my email address? No. Anton Daniels four one three at gmail dot com. But what I was going to say was, can I shoot you like a separate idea? I'm not. I'm not saying that I yeah, won't take that. E email me whatever it is that you want to email me, bro. I'm saying it's still right here. Are you you ready to go right now? Can I, can well, I'm about to wrap it up because I'm about to go to bed. Okay. But um, I feel you. Yeah, just shoot me an email and we'll connect outside of that. Okay, I appreciate it, man. All right, big Thank dog. You. Yep. You Peace. think I you want me to take one more freezy? Yo, I, I, shit, I'm good. All right, I do. Let me see one more. They're gonna have to make it quick, though. Uh, is it G Day? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing? What's happening, bro? You gotta make it quick. Oh man, I just want to say, what's up, Freezer? What's up, Anton? How y'all doing tonight? What's up, big oh, dog? Bro, bro. I just wanted to let me close this door real quick. Hold on. Um, I just wanted to get some advice from you. Uh, I'm in HR. Uh, just a little bit of background about myself. I'm in HR. Uh, GD. I got my GD when I was 22. Okay. And I kind of finagled my way to get in my career path, you know, by relationship and things like that. Uh, and I kind of am stuck in a place of what what to do with my next step. Uh, How old? I'm trying to get to say that again. How old are you now? I'm 33. Okay. Uh, you work. I you work. To you work for resources. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to get into software engineering, uh, and I'm also uh, battling with just starting my own business, uh, like doing jewelry or something like that, a clothing line. But I think that's small time, or I can stick with just my career path and try to see how far I can go right there. Why? Why don't you do both? Why? Why are you limited? Is what I'm wondering. Because I'm not telling you that you're going to be successful or you're not going to be successful when it comes to your business. But I am telling you that you're going to learn some lessons that then maybe carry over into a, 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 something new that you wind up doing or another business. Or it may be giving you leverage in order to be able to go to a certain level inside of corporate America. But why can't you do both? Why is it one or the uh, other? Tommy, Tommy uh, I just had like some personal stuff going on right now with my baby mama. And my daughter, so we're trying to figure that out. Uh, I just moved out from her little spot uh, that she had, and I didn't want to keep going through that situation. So I had to separate myself from that because it was. Dang, that mean you ain't got nothing but time, man. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I'm trying to figure out the custody thing right now, but that's neither. Newly that's single it. men got more time to go in and make make the the whole take over the whole fucking world, bro. I had a homeboy. And uh, he kind of similarly went through the same thing. He was sitting there pouting and stuff. I said, bro, you ain't got nothing but time to go and get money now. Facts, facts. That's what you, oh. you ain't got nothing better to do. What else is there to do except for working and run a bag up? Work your regular job, hustle, and then also work on what you, uh, your craft outside of that. Do both. Okay. Shit, you free now? Yeah, <laughs> for sure, for sure. And it's going to help you take your mind off of what you're going through with her, too. <laughs> Facts, bro. You're nah, fucking that's, that's, free that's now. Go and run that shit up. Okay. All right, I'm it's, gonna it's not, it's it, not man, an but... either or, it's an and. Mm -hmm. I got so my... Should I separate myself from doing the software engineering stuff? Like, you know, take that out the way? Uh, I was Why would try you take to go that back out the way? You ain't got nothing but time. I was going to go back to school, but I just feel like if I can make the right connections in HR, because a lot of jobs I feel like are not really hindering some, they lean more towards experience than education. Uh, especially you in can my do field. both. Do them All both. Right. 
You are not limited. You got 24 hours a day. You're going to sleep six, seven, eight of them. You got an additional 16 hours, and you ain't got nothing but time but to run that shit up. Y'all better start utilizing them uh, those calendars like Anton, dude. Real talk. No, <laughs> I do so much throughout my day, bro. Literally, man. I went by, checked on a crib. That junk is looking incredible, bro. I took some pictures today. That junk was looking sweet as hell, Freezy. You got to check this out, bro. Nah. I just got the brickwork done to it. Shit looks sweet so you as don't, hell, you bro. Don't pass, you done passed all the framing and all that stuff? Yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm way past all of that. Oh, shit. Yeah, you shit, you ready. Damn near ready yeah, bro. We building, we building whole houses at this point, bro. Yeah. Yeah, just got the brickwork done on that bitch. That junk is looking incredible. Look real good right there. You you got the same contractor on all of your shit. Yep. Man, I got the uh got everything out there, bro. That junk looking sweet, bro. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we getting it's there. Weird. Weird, I'll man. be out I'll be going and checking on properties and meeting with assessors and meeting with contractors on my way down to the office and then I live stream, tapped in to tap into my corporate job, going to those meetings. Jumped into the live stream, got into another meeting right after that. Right after that, I did some phone calls when it came to um, some applications that we building, some new apps that we building for the for the Apple Vision Pro and stuff like that that we trying to launch within the next year. And then right after that, I went into coaching. Right after that, I went into the, uh, I worked out, went took a shower, and then jumped on the live stream. Man, we're going to get this shit. So let me ask you this: How you? I am how going you to, get it. and I didn't even, I, and I live streamed last night for four hours. And I didn't even go to bed till 3 o'clock in the morning. And then I was right back up going to get that shit. And I got a family. And I be seeing my daughter. So look, man, all of y'all dudes that's out here talking about, man, either or or this or that. How much, what the fuck y'all got going on all day? Y'all ain't got nothing better to do but go and get the money. Ain't nothing out here but money, bro. It's, it's, it's plentiful. It's at your fingertips. And here's the benefit of it. Let me, get, let me tell you the real benefit of it, bro. The benefit of it is when you busy, you get you don't have time to be fucking up. Cause you ain't you ain't got nothing, you ain't involved in none of that shit no more. Now I'm spending all of my time on stuff that's more productive, so I can't be tempted. And that's one of the reasons why you never see me in trouble. Is because nobody can say that I was somewhere that I wasn't supposed to be because I'm busy. And so because I'm so consumed every day with stuff, I ain't got time to be tempted. I ain't got time to get involved in shit that I ain't supposed to be in because I'll be trying to get to all of the money. And when I ain't getting all to the money, I'll be like, oh, man, I'm about to go out go out and, you know what I'm saying, go and holler at my chick or whatever. And I'm about to do some fun shit. But, man, I'll be so consumed with life that I'm full with life. And so I ain't got time to be arguing with no woman. I ain't got no time to be dealing with no fucking baby mamas. I ain't got time for none of that. I am busy. I am busy, busy. And I don't get involved in no nonsense because I'm really out here getting it. All right, man. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the advice. All right, all right big dog. I get it. Freezy, I be, man, listen. I am busy all day, every day. Sometimes I, in the middle of the day, you don't get like sleepy where you just be crashing and shit sometimes. No, I be gone. I be getting it, bro. I be getting it. Real talk. Like every single day, man. I'm. It's almost like the more I go, the more I want to go. And one, of, and, and one of the reasons for that is that I know that when I get home at night and when I'm done with the day, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> like, cause, cause, cause I'm, cause I got, I let it all out. I left it all on the floor for the whole day. And so what happens right. is when I finally go to sleep, I don't be on my phone scrolling and seeing shit and none of that. When I go to bed, I'm gone. And so when I get up. So you do a good job with, when, so when you, when you come home and lay down, you, you do a good job with tuning that shit out. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm completely out. gone. See, I need to learn how to do that, man. Even when I lay down, I had I have shit on my mind, though. Nope, I'm gone. My phone is on sleep mode. Um, I'm out. I'm out immediately because I work myself. Like I work, I get it, and so I leave it you on the exhausted. flow. Exhausted. That's what you're saying. Yeah, and then I leave it on the flow, 
and and I'm out. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'll be like, oh, man, I'm about to get this shit. It's like a whole new day, dog. I'll be, I wake up excited. I'll be lit. I'll be like, oh, man, it's time to get popping and it's time to get going, bro. And I'll just be, I'll be excited as hell. By the time I lay down, I'm like, damn, I let, the, I let it all out. Like, I couldn't have gave no more today. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'll be refreshed as fuck. And I'll be like, yeah, it's, 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 the world is mine. And it's every day. It's the same thing. And I, but I excited. I jump. Some days I jump on my bike. And I ride through the street if the weather permits. Some days I jump in this car. I jump in that car. I got this meeting going on. I'm excited to meet this person. I got to go shake hands with this person. I go and meet people throughout the streets. I fit in a baseball game or a basketball game in there somewhere, and then I jump on the live stream and we be kicking that shit and we be running it up. This contractor want me to do this. Like, life be full. Like, I be high off life. I ain't got no time to smoke. I ain't got no time to do this. I ain't got no time to do that. I be like, man, it's it's go time. And I just be excited as hell, bro. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome, bro. Shit, I might. I I, I feel like I'm doing something wrong, nigga. I need this. <laughs> I'm saying, because when I... Yeah, I do a lot, too. Man. When I, I, when I lay down, dog... Uh, I don't know. I'd be having shit on my mind. I'd be like thinking about what if I forgot something. Or... I don't. But I don't. One thing I one thing I don't do. I don't utilize my calendar like you do. Like I should. Oh I'd man. I'd be trying to juggle that shit. I'd be trying to juggle everything in my own in my mind. You know what I'm saying? I, my calendar is my Bible, bro. Like literally, like my calendar is so is so set up. It's so sick that. Um, the people that's closest to me, the people that like even Rita, everything is set up on my calendar. So when I wake up in the morning, after I brush my teeth, after I pray, I go and I check my calendar and I'm like, okay, this is what I got to do today. This, 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 and this. And I start, I start, you know what I'm saying? Everything is based off of, uh, you know, structure. Literally, like I can look at tomorrow, right? I can pull up my calendar. Um, I look at tomorrow and this is what my, this is what my calendar look like, bro. Bam, 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 all day. <laughs> John is, got that bitch color coded. <laughs> yeah, it's, seriously, it's six to eight a.m. That's when I start preparing for the day. Like as far as like, I'm at my computer at six a.m. in the morning, and I'm figuring that shit out, and I'm putting it together, and I'm preparing for this meeting. I'm doing that. The brown is for corporate, so I'm I'm available for corporate from eight thirty to four. The the orange is I'm live streaming on the Millionaire Morning Show. The purple, green, and the blue separates between Zoom calls, personal calls, and if I'm talking to somebody as, as a corporate client because I charge a different amount from the people that I talk to from a coaching perspective, I work out from 8 to 9 p.m. That's what that is. And then I live stream at 10 p.m. Um, and me and me could be live streaming tomorrow night. And we getting it. You said you say your, your wife put that together for you? But she um... No, I, met, I, I put my own calendar, but she got access to it so she can add things into it because oh, she really? could see what... Yeah, because she can see what my capacity is. And so I share my what calendar. App that is? What that is? I need that. This is just, this is just Google. This is just a Google, Google uh, calendar. Oh, shit, man. Yeah. I need it. I'm behind. I need to do that shit. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm moving. Bam, 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 bam. From 6 to 8 a.m., I got uh, two meetings uh, to where, because I got overseas developers, and so they operate literally on the exact opposite time. So they at 6 mm -hmm. to 8 at night. You know what I'm saying? I'm meeting with them and then I'm getting stuff prepared and then I got to issue whatever checks I got to issue as far as the contractors and stuff. And I'm getting it. You say you come out, you say you're developing an app. Well, we developing two applications because we're doing two app, test apps for uh, the Apple Vision the Apple Pro. Vision? Yeah, it's right here. So I got, I got uh, three of them. I got three of these joints. The Apple Vision Pros. And so yeah. we meet, we meet, and we trying to develop new applications um, for it. And then we focus on, we focus on putting it together. I got one here, one at the office, and then my my, de my developers got one. And so we be working. And so we well, so working what, put it together. And what we, you think about? So you believe? So you believe in the metaverse? Then you think the metaverse? Oh gonna fucking take yeah! Off? Hell yeah, we do. Hell yeah, we do. <laughs> I might need I might need to holler at you in time. I got I got I got a little some some I'm thinking about putting into, but I don't know. I kind of been on the fence, but you know I I feel like the metaverse, but 
I don't know. I, I'm going to have to holler at you, Anton. Man, listen, we work. I work. 100%. I'm working 100% of the time, bro. And we get it in. And so, you know, we order food wherever it is we go. For my groceries, I have them delivered. I have my – um, I had the cleaners come today because to, Rita came here. And so the – I don't like to call them maids, but they – you know, they're the cleaners. They come in and they clean my place for me and stuff, and I'm gone. Right. I'm you gone, bro. Sure, you got to make sure them cleaners – Ain't, ain't got no ass and titties and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just got to make sure they, they ain't fine or nothing. You know? <laughs> well, I'm just joking. I'm just joking, Reed. I'm just joking. No, nah, we don't care about that. Uh, we, I like I like fine girls no matter what I do. But, um, no, nah, there's some white girls that come in and clean. They can clean their ass off, too. We, we tip them good. But they clean my, my place out in the suburbs, and they clean this one. So, And I just be getting it, bro. My shit is... I keep a I keep a set of drinks. Like, bro, you should see my shit. Like that's this is all that's a eighty five kind of- that's a eighty five inch TV right there. And uh this is my my new coffee table and all that. I'm waiting on my chairs back here. Um that's some of my drinks right there. What that is in front of you? That bottle right there. Oh, this basil Hayden. That oh, basil that's that Hayden. whiskey. Dog. Yeah, it's, it's a uh this is a red wine cast cast finish. I got this one. Oh shit! Look at me, bro. What you know about that basil AD? Yeah, it's sick. So I got the basil Hayden right here. Oh yeah, I, I love I got, that. I got this one right here. This one too. Is that the whiskey or that's wine? No, this is whiskey. Okay, whiskey. Yeah, both, whiskey. Both yeah. Them, both of them is whiskey. Okay. Oh, they got a red wine whiskey. Ain't no yeah, whiskey. This, this is this one is a whiskey finished in a wine cask. What the fuck? I got to yeah. get that, dog. Yeah, it's a whiskey finished in a wine cask, so it's pretty dope. It's really good. Bro, my my cousin he owns a um a, a cigar bar in Tampa, and he put me on that Basil Hayden because yeah, you know yeah. I started drinking whiskey. I was heavy on tequila, but I got some tequila for your ass over here, bro. Wait, which one you talk? You 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 ain't talking about the uh, Casa Azul now. No, this is shit you, that you want right here. Hold on, this is what you want. And time for you to put me on some new shit. Let me see what that is. A a a Dictivo? Yeah, Tequila? this is what you want right here. But here, let me tell you what happened with this one, right? So you want yeah. this, and then I got a um, I got a whiskey that's really good, right? So this is my new shit right here. This is a whiskey that I got. It's called Blanton. Mm. Now, the thing about Blanton is this is special, right? Now, yeah. if you look at it, um, it actually got a B right here. Now, they got oh, different. Oh, yeah, on the side, got, right? Okay, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they got yeah. different kinds. And once you get so many different um, out of corks. Yeah. You send it to them and they'll send you an entire case and all of that shit. This shit is this shit is good. This shit's rare. Now this that right shit. here though, this right here though is this is 14 years aged. If you can see it right there. How much that bottle cost right there? Um I pay I think like eight fifty or something like that. Yeah. The other one the other one costs more on it. Well, actually, I think I paid six something for this, and then the state made them raise the price to eight something after I bought it. So I think I paid like six seventy five, six six fifty for this. This is the good shit right here. This is that good. Yeah. I'm still around here drinking Patron. I'm good with <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So yeah, I'm gonna remember that. I ain't know you was a whiskey drinker though, dog. Did- I mean, I'm gonna tell you something. You, you you just you just told me a little a little more about you just then, AB. <laughs> a lot of people don't yeah, that I mean, like, you know, if you're gonna drink, then drink good. I got the Azul over there too, though. Yeah, yeah, I've been on that Azul. I like that Azul. I like that Azul, man. Yeah, it's but, uh, uh no that that Adictivo. That's they got different kinds. That's 14 years aged. So I'm I'm gonna try. I'm gonna make my wife buy. I ain't gonna spend my money. I'm gonna make her buy it. Man, listen. 
Hey, oh, I, be, I meant to say this to everybody that's watching, man. We on the road to five thousand subscribers, man. Yeah. And um, you know, it's 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 gonna be a celebration. Shout out to everybody who has uh contributed, man, and and to help. A lot of people don't realize it. So a lot of people are saying, "Oh no, it's so." Listen, it's a difference between the fourteen year age and the regular yeah. shit. So let me let me show it to y'all because a lot of people don't really realize it. Um, y'all done got my boy in his bag now. See, come well, on. Well, a lot. Of, I, I could just pull it up online. Like I don't even have okay. to. Do it. They could do it if they want to. Um, did you Did you know this? Did you know? Okay, the 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 drink that's the healthiest for you that will help you live longer. But but you can but. That's just if you're only taking a, like a couple of shots a day. It's whiskey. Yeah. I know that. Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. That's dope. But yeah, you know, I, you um, know cowboys used to, cowboys used to pour whiskey on the on the wounds back then to help heal the wounds and shit. Did they? Drink whiskey. Yeah, and, and drink that shit so you won't hurt no more. So yeah. you can look at this right here, bro. Like this is the kind I got right here. Yeah. Like, I like Tivo. Yeah, so you can see the they sell, a lot of other places they selling it for a thousand dollars. So extra it depends extra on it de wear. yeah, it depends on the on the um it depends on the you know the 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 state your state prices and what they are or whatever. So 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 um the only one at that price is the Anejo? That's it. The only one. Well, it depends. You can get different kinds. I got a they bunch of stuff. I got some stuff that's aged ten years. I got some stuff that's aged all the time. Rita likes um. Fuck. She she drinks. Rita drinks Wolf of Reserve and. Mm. She drinks something else. She likes. She, Rita's like an old white man. She drink Wolf of Reserve and something else. What that is? Wolf of Reserve. Yeah. It's the liquor. It's it's ones that you know they got different different years and stuff like that. So oh okay. Oh Woodford. Oh, okay Woodford. Okay, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good though. It's cool. So I I don't know. I mix it up. Don't worry. I got some Casamigos for the ladies. I got some Hennessy over there too. You chase that tequila? <laughs> no, nah, I drink it straight. Hell yeah! You got to drink that shit straight. Yeah, bro. I drink I drink my shit straight. So. Yeah, man, I'll be chilling, hey, man. Hey, hey y'all, when when y'all when Anton be when he be uh uh, uh when, when y'all see Anton doing the Harlem shake when he talking on Wednesday <laughs> night, he on that that uh, TiVo extra rare <laughs> fourteen. Uh, somebody uh. says Shannon Sharp's Hennessy. I have I don't know what what kind Shannon Sharp is, but. And then like the vodka that I eat, drink, I only drink Tito's vodka. I like Tito's. So you like Tito's? Yeah, Tito's is it. The Tito's vodka. That's all I drink. Yeah. From a vodka perspective. So yeah, it's cool though. Whiskeys, bourbon, all of that, tequilas, everything. We we like it all. Life is life is too short, man. You gotta enjoy it, man, and have fun. That's a fact, man. That's a fact. Thank thank you, man. I'm a uh, I'm gonna look that uh I didn't. The first bottle I'ma get that you just show, showed me is the uh, uh, the basil, uh, the uh, red wine, yeah, the red wine whiskey. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that shit, man. Yeah, yeah. The ladies love Casamigos. So I don't know why they like it so much. Man, bro, man, dog, dog. I was drinking Casamigos before that shit went viral on TikTok. I didn't know it was viral. Every every girl, every young girl that come to the studio. Let me tell you, man, these little hood rat hoes. Every young girl that comes to the studio, they want Hennessy and Casamigos, bro. Yeah. I don't know man, what man. the fuck it is. They always want Casamigos and Hennessy. Man, I've been on Casamigos for a long time, dog. Long time. So I always and then, keep Henny. I always, always keep the women, the women want it. The women want it because it went viral on TikTok. That's, it's, is it's that like why they man. want it? Yeah, that's why they want it, man. Before that, they was they was they was on Patron. It was Patron. Then now they want Casamigos. Well, they was drinking the rock too before Diddy got locked up. That's yeah, yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But I seen you on uh, I seen you a little hood too. 
Who? About it was a like it was like a couple of weeks ago, a week ago. You was on that Hennessy. You were drinking yeah, Hennessy. I, I keep in I got some Hennessy here. I think you had the uh the 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 one. I was in the uh, studio meeting. probably though. Yeah. yeah. I was like, A D drink Hennessy. Oh man, A man, A D. Man, A D <laughs> yeah. got over here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I think me and Mika was in the studio. I was drinking some Hennessy. I seen it in your eyes too. I, I seen it. <laughs> I see it. Hey, your eyes was glossed Ooh. up. I said, yeah, he, he be feeling that shit. He feeling that shit. Yeah, I mix it up sometimes. We we see what's happening. But I mean, you know, it just take the edge off and make it think and make things a little bit more cool. And you know, you get you just get a little bit looser. I gotta I gotta yeah, limit yeah. that shit though, cause that that should have had me crashing online. I'll be saying some yeah. stuff I ain't supposed to be saying. <laughs> when wow. you woke, when you wake up the next morning, you're gonna be like, "Man, I said that." <laughs> I just leave that junk up there. I got some Hennessy yeah. White. You ever had Hennessy White? Yeah, I don't really like it like that. I haven't tasted it yet. So. Yeah, I don't like the Hennessy. It's it's all right. It tastes more like brandy to me. I think that's what it might be. I don't know. Is yeah. it brandy or is it cognac? I ain't never had it. I don't know what the hell this is. I think it is cognac. Oh, I think it is cognac. Cognac. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I had it before. I had it before, but if I'm gonna drink cognac, I, I left cognac alone a long time ago, dog. I ain't never dog. tasted it, so I'm gonna check it out one day now. Cognac, cognac had me acting. Cognac had me acting crazy, dog. Really? Hell yeah, cognac. That shit don't agree with Freezy, dog. I remember when everybody was <laughs> when everybody was drinking the green bottles of uh Remy. Yeah. Man, I remember me and my homeboy, we went through six, six fifths, dog. Jesus Christ. And that was my last day drinking Remy. That was my last day drinking cognac. I still taste that shit right now. Mm. And that was that was like, and that was uh 12 years ago. Yeah. I still taste that shit. That's crazy. Nah, I can't do it, bro. AD, I'm finna let you um get you some sleep, man, because you got to wake up at 6. Remember that, dog. <laughs> no, I'm in the All office right. at 6. Man. Hold, yeah, on, hold, on, let, let, hold on, AD. Let's talk about that for, for like one minute. How you function? If you only get if you only get an hour and thirty, I I went I don't give a damn. I'm not gonna be the man of the year. Fuck it, I ain't said that. I said that. <laughs> I'm just not gonna be the man of the year because you, I, you I'm, can get, I'm working on getting more sleep. I sleep on the weekends though. I sleep in a little bit. Well, no, I'm still working. I still get to my computer by six on the weekends. Um, but after I work and I get my stuff done, I usually lay back down and chill out and hang out. And, you know, chill with the family and then go get something. During the weekday? No, nah, during the weekend. I'm saying if you only get, let's say, okay, let's say you lay down there because you don't have some late nights. If yeah. you lay down there at four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and then you have to be, you have to be in your, be at your office at six. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't. It, de it depends. Sometimes I lay down for an hour and then I pop back up. Sometimes I don't lay down. And then sometimes I just go straight to the office um, and I try to work a little bit more efficiently. And then I might take a like a, a hour or two nap if I can wiggle some stuff around. I'll have her move some stuff right. on my schedule and then I'll take like an hour or two nap. Because I, um, I got a bed in my office too. Man, I need, see, I, I need Red Bull, mm -mm. coffee. Nope. I got a bed, I got a bed in my office. Like I got a okay, separate room. I got a bedroom in my office too. That's good, man. I remember uh Kevin Samuels. I was like, when when I used to see Kevin Samuels pull them red bulls, I used to be like, that's why that man pulled them red bulls. Fuck that. I ain't drinking no, I ain't, I can't do that. <laughs> that's why he was that's why he was drinking the red bulls like that, cause he gotta keep up, you gotta stay up, man. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. I, I can't do that, bro. I can't do it. But then, and again, at the same time, so when I see these young guys up here and they like, oh, man, you know, I'm doing this or I'm just, and I be thinking to myself, dog, nigga, like, 
You know what I'd be doing if I ain't have no family either? Dog, I wouldn't even give. That's why I'd be saying, like, man, if I ain't have, if I wasn't married, I wouldn't get mm-hmm. married again. I wouldn't get married again because I would just be dedicated to my, like, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't give a fuck about nothing but getting it, bro. Like, I'm, I'm addicted to the grind. I, I get excited just thinking about what the possibilities are and, Man, I'll be going to see new properties and signing deals and shit. And uh, I got a new water deal on the table and all of that. And man, that junk be like, it's it, it's exciting to me, man. It's like it's like it's like getting high. It literally feel like you on a on clouds and you getting high, bro. Every new every new opportunity, every new everything, bro. And I just be going to I just. That's why I laugh. Like I remember a few a few years ago, a couple years ago, somebody said, um, he can't keep up that pace. He's gonna burn out. I was thinking to myself, y'all don't know who I am, bro. Like I'm this way, I've been this way since I was younger, bro. Like I always just wanted it. I worked two full time jobs when I was in school and in college, and then I was still going to school, and then I would live in a library and read books, and that's just who I am, man. Just give me a computer, give me a book bag, and give me a microphone, and I'm good. We gonna get that shit, dog. That's why when you said choosing a wife could possibly could possibly be the the most important decision you make in your life, mm-hmm. dog. That's true because the type of schedule you got, the type of pace that you need to maintain every day, mm-hmm. dog. Your wife got to be she got to be able to uh make at least make your day easier. Or, you know, she got to be on board, bro, because it's a lot of women are not prepared for that type of schedule. And like it, it takes it takes a it takes a, 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 a certain type of woman to to keep up with you. Yeah, she uh she cool, though. Like she get it. She get it. She with it. You know, everything. Is, <laughs> everything is. um. Everything is dope. I mean, you know, we let it, we, we both get it. Like, you know, we get, I get a Rolex, she get a Rolex. It's cool. I mean, you know, we, we live a life. We live a life. It's great. I'm not going to front. It's awesome. Like even uh, the, how much I pay for this place, bro. I pay almost 11,000 a month for this place. Mm. Yeah, I pay almost. That's not. Time. That's not your studio. That's should, that's another place. That's another place, right? Yeah, this is separate. This is a corporate apartment. This is okay. a corporate apartment. This is a apartment that's in my um. Yeah, that one, ain't that ain't one of my business. The no, this that ain't this cooking is, the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, this is a separate place. Yeah, I like cooking the bathroom. I like I like that spot. Yeah. Yeah, this is dope. This is dope. So, yeah, man, we get to it, bro. We we make sure we run it up, and we take care of business. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful, man. Shout out to, shout out to uh, Miss Daniels as well, man. Real talk. Yeah, she was hustling. She just left. She she just left uh, before I started live streaming. Head to the crib. That's and you awesome, know what's so man. funny? My daughter got the same work ethic, bro. Yeah, cause <clears throat> you want ethic. Like she don't miss Taekwondo, she don't miss a trip, she don't miss school, she don't miss nothing. The only time she miss school is if she out of town for Taekwondo or something like that. She got the same work ethic, man. It's crazy. So I, I remember don't... you. I remember you were saying um you had the shoe business and she was you She's had still running that. She's still oh run... really? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yep. So everything is good, man. I can't complain at all. That's awesome, man. Man, God bless you and your family, man. Listen, you need to lay your ass down, dog. I'm finna go, cause I right, freezing. I love you, hey, bro. Hey, I love you too, dog. Hey, five thousand, y'all. Five thousand, man. Y'all, y'all go y'all subscribe listen. to No Captivity with Freezy, man. Yeah, yeah. Make that, make that, make the haters mad. I felt it, so man. bad for Quinn last night because I kept him on the stream for like four hours. I was like, damn, Quinn, I got to get you out of here, bro. 
you had you had some oh man Quinn don't give a damn as long as you got some women around he don't give a damn he gonna hang around <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right AD man all right big dog you, man all right I love you bro all right bro that's my dog Freezy make sure y'all go and kick it with my dog Freezy and uh you know what I'm saying run it up all right man let me see let me read some of these super chats and I'm gonna get y'all out of here for the night. Uh, let me see. Rob says, keep talking. Yo, talk. Shout out to Rob. I appreciate you for holding me down, big dog. Um, John Anthony says, Vid- uh, hit me with the super sticker. I appreciate you, John Anthony. Thank you for holding me down. Time's Up says, if that's uh, you, we sent that in to Gaylord Big Ups. Shout out to Time's Up. I appreciate you. My dog, Tony Williams, says salute to the real Freezy. And A.D. Freezy, I need you to demand that Anton Diddy put a shirt on the road is for Solo Dolo. We don't need rumors. <laughs> Chris Moore is in the building, says, if you guys never had social media in 1992, all you, you would have no clue on how this country is opening. Opening? You all have no clue. I don't know what that means, but shout out to you. Me University says women cannot resist an attractive man. H-Town, No. Classy B says, major respect to both of you brothers. Thank you for, for being great conversations and daily inspiration. Shout out to Classy Beats. I appreciate you, big dog. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Um, we love y'all. We love y'all. We rock out with y'all. Thank y'all. Anton, are you streaming tomorrow? Yeah, we do the Millionaire Morning Show every single morning. Every single morning we do the Millionaire Morning Show in the AM. So... Um, moderators, don't pay no attention to the Dusties. We handle it. We keep it moving. And then we, uh, you know, we run it up. Keep getting in the bags. Y'all see my receipts. Y'all see my deposits. You see what it is that I do on a daily basis. You see what I make in corporate America. You see what it is that we doing. So fo- focus, stay focused, 100% focus, no distractions. No going that way. No going that way. They get, they still got to go home and they still got to answer to their mom and make sure that they get that hamburger helper together. We're going to run this shit up. We drink $800,000 tequilas. We have the whole view of the city at the top penthouses. We drive Porsches, Mercedes. We order 911s and we run that shit up. We wear, we wear $1,000 glasses and $1,200, $1,500 robes. You know what I'm saying? We, we go to sleep with $50,000 watches on our wrist. That's how we live our life. My smile is a $30,000 smile. My smile is a $30,000 smile, all right? We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all stay focused, stay up, <laughs> and run it up. Don't let nobody distract you from getting to that bag. Never fall into the trap of getting distracted with other people. Because when you argue with broke people, people that's observing from a distance can't tell which one of y'all is broke. They may think both of y'all is broke. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to holler at y'all tomorrow. Peace.